Right, and I think uh, I think we're live. Uh, if you are here watching live, please let me know uh, if you can hear me and you can see me okay. Uh, Paul's just managed to get connected, I think. So, yeah, I've not taken my own seat. Change team. No, not team. Change colour. And I'm going to be blue. Right, okay, so. Good evening, Paul. You're now live. Let me know if you can hear Paul in the chat. Um, and yeah, welcome to a live tutorial and playthrough of Middle Earth, the Wizards collectible card game from 1995. Um, let me just pop out the chat so that I can see it. Um, yeah, it's all good. It's all working. So um, this is not a sponsored video. The publisher of this game <laughs> has not contacted me to do a, a playthrough video of this. This is a game from 1995. So in the mid 90s, when Magic the Gathering exploded and became became the latest biggest thing, huge amount of companies jumped on board and started producing uh, card games. Uh, and Iron Crown Enterprises, who had the rights to Middle Earth, they did um, Middle Earth role playing game and stuff like that. They did a game called Middle Earth: The Wizards, collectible card game. Um, and I remember uh, very vividly being in a London shop in 1995 and seeing when it came out, and I bought it. I have hundreds of these cards in my attic. Now, I only bought cards from the first two or three sets, but it's been 25 years and I learned how to play this game back in the mid 90s uh, and I played it load then. And then about 15 years ago, I, I got back into it and started reading about it again and played a, played a couple of games. And then about five years ago, got back into it again, played a few games uh, and then just recently um, decided that I was going to get back into it again. Um, can't hear Paul S. Right. That's a shame. <laughs> Just say hello again, Paul. Yeah, you are speaking now. Right, okay, I know what's wrong, and I've had this before, and I know how to fix it. So bear with us a minute, I will get Paul working. Uh, I need to go into there, and I need to go into there, and I need to say, um, oh, how did I do this last time? Desktop audio. Yeah, it was a problem last time. Um, yeah, well, no, my headphones have been doing something really weird, so. I will get I will get pulled back, uh, or I just disconnect the the headphones. I'm trying to remember what I did last time to get it working. I think it was that. So hopefully, can I say something now? No, no, you know, <laughs> no, because I'm monitoring my desktop audio. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working, so I'm going to disconnect my my headphones. Let's see if that works. No, oh, no, because hang on. Yeah, you'll be coming out of there. I need to just adjust um, Discord. I need to get the sound settings from Discord over to the output device is the monitor. And then hopefully you'll now go up. How's that? No, you're still not showing up. Right, this is really weird. I will get Paul's sound here because otherwise it's going to be a very one-way stream. Um, Right, output device, monitor, try that. No, still not showing up. This is really weird. I don't know why. Um, right. Okay, so microphone is there, desktop audio is there, monitor off is there. I need to configure. Yeah, I've had this before, so apologies for this. Talk amongst yourselves, uh, and I will try and get this, try and get this sorted. Uh, that is definitely going there. That is definitely going there. Yeah, you heard him there because you heard him through through my microphone. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, which is not good. So I, I can hear him from my speakers, uh, but unfortunately you can't hear him uh, because my streaming software is not picking up the desktop audio, unfortunately. Um, and I've had this before and I can never remember because it's always a different problem. That's, that's the thing, it's always a different problem. Um, so it's not that. Yes, yeah, that, that's what it is, that's what it is. So in, in, my, in my Windows sound settings, I am sending the audio to the monitor because my, my monitor has built-in speakers, so that's how I can hear you. Um, and in Discord, it is sending my audio to the monitor. Let me just check that again. Yeah, output device. Well, I'll just I'll just change it to default and see what that does. Um, right, let's go back to the streaming software. Say hello again. Yeah, no, still not working. 
Yeah, weird, baffling. Yeah, and the last time I the last time I did this, it was all fine, and then this time it's not fine. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to suggest. Desktop audio. Click on that. Click on properties. Device. Right. How's that? There you go. Hello. Fixed it. Right. Well, We're all good. <laughs> can you can you remember how to do it next time? No. Right. <laughs> anyway. Paul's here. Um, so Hello. what I what is this? Uh, Middle Earth collectible card game. We're playing on Tabletop Simulator tonight because lockdown restrictions in the UK means Paul can't come round. Um, Middle Earth, the card game, is no longer in print. In fact, uh, Iron Crown Enterprises lost the license in the very late 90s uh, because the, the Lord of the Rings films were coming out uh, and they didn't have enough money to, to renew the license, as far as I know. But yes, I have a copy of this game. I have hundreds of cards of this game. And the game is a beast to learn. Um, even speaking to some of the fans of the game now, I, they've said that there's nobody who is 100% sure about all of the rules of this game. And what's confusing is, I mean, first of all, it's a very complex game. It has a big learning curve and there's a lot of things going on. It's extremely clever and it's extremely different and it's very different from pretty much any other collectible card game that I've ever played. It's more like a two player adventure game with cards rather than a, a pure CCG and games of it can take a long time. But one of the um, one of the uh, the learning curves that you go through with this game is that there are various layers to the rules. So when you first play it, there is a set of rules called the starter rules. Once you've learned the starter rules, you then move on from there and you use the standard rules and the standard rules use a different rule set. OK, so over the years, there's been various different rule sets. Um, and if you do play this game, then it's basically it's up to you which rule set you use. Now, what we're doing tonight is we are starting at the very, very basic. OK, we are playing two starter decks. So just before the game got effectively cancelled and finished, I think it was about 1999, Iron Crown Enterprises released two starter decks, which are really, really simple decks for you to learn the game with. And that's what we're doing tonight. OK, we are playing two very, very simple decks. What that means is you are not going to see the full experience that this game offers tonight because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's in this game that just isn't included in these in these decks tonight. But this is intended to be just a just an initial overview of, of what the game is and, and how it plays. And if we both enjoy this and we like it, we might move on from here with with some more advanced decks. Now, Paul, we've played this a few times over the last month learning how to play, haven't we? Yes, we have. Yeah, we tried the initial starter decks um, scripted uh, playthrough, which, mm -hmm. we, uh, which we did. Um, and now I think tonight we're going to use these starter decks to play a normal game a normal as game normal as it can be with the starter decks yeah. so that a couple of rules don't really apply to the starter decks do they but yeah um uh, but yeah we're, we'll play as per normal yes um, rather than scripted yeah yeah so yeah the, the starter deck that the starter pack that came out was really good because uh it included a booklet that literally told you step by step what to do, including the dice rolls. And it was fully scripted. And me and Paul sat down one afternoon and we just followed through that. And it did a good job of teaching us the game. Now, uh, things to help us learn how to play, I actually have, because I've got the physical game, um, I've actually got, uh, yeah, Middle Earth, The Wizard Companion. I bought this. Uh, this is a book, which is, this is really the rule book. Because uh, the little tiny rule book that came with the game, the rules were in there, but they were very, very hard to understand. This book's really good. Uh, I've also got a turn sequence, which you can see is two sheets of A4. Uh, and I've also got the Middle Earth, uh, the Wizard's Player Guide. Now, I'm not going to be using this because it turns out that 90% of this book is actually a, a list of all of the cards and, and which ones are good. So that's more of a strategy guide. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to aim this at the beginner. This video is intended if you don't know anything about the Middle Earth collectible card game uh, and you just, you just want to see it played, really. Um, I hope we're going to get all the rules right. If anybody is in the chat uh, who knows the game and we do make a rules mistake, then please let us know. Uh, or if you're watching this video afterwards and we do get something wrong, please let me know. And if you turn on the cling on subtitles, then any rules errors that we make during the game, unless we pick up on them while we're playing, uh, I will add some cling on subtitles on screen so that if you're watching this, then hopefully we're going to play it correctly. OK, so the objective of the game is obviously set in Middle Earth. If you don't know anything about Tolkien or Middle Earth, I'm not going to explain that, but the idea of this game is that each player is one of the five wizards who were sent to Middle-earth uh, in order to try and 
um, basically help the fight against the Dark Lord Sauron. So uh, in this game, uh, Paul is playing Gandalf. I'm playing Saruman. Forget what you know about Saruman. Uh, he's a good guy, really. Um, and basically, our objective is to try and muster support with through getting like powerful items, recruiting characters, allies, factions, everything to join our side. We're not fighting each other as such, but the intention is that we're trying to convince the council that our our route to defeat the Dark Lord or our 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 ideas for how we should defeat the Dark Lord, they're the ones that the council listen to. So it's a really interesting idea we're not fighting each other or anything like that we're just trying to yeah you know, travel around get stuff um and convince the council that they should listen to us the way that this uh, game works is it uses marshalling points as the victory points and if we just have a look at my player area here i'm just going to set myself um a camera camera screenshots ca a camera preset there you can see here this counter this is six marshalling points uh so i have six marshalling points at the start of the game. And the reason is, these are my characters. So if you look in the top left of the character, you will see the number two. That is the number of marshalling points that this character is worth. So I've got Legolas, two, Eladan, one, Pippin, one, and Gimli, two. They are my starting characters, so I have six marshalling points at the start of the game. If we zoom over to Paul's area, we will see Paul has also got six marshalling points. He's got Aragorn, uh, Merry, Kili and Boromir, okay, which, which add up to six marshalling points. So we've already got six. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there are starter rules and there are uh, more, there are standard rules and there's all sorts of rules. Today, we're going to be playing to 20 marshalling points, okay? So the rules we're going to play with today are when one player has reached 20 marshalling points, they declare, you know, the, the game is coming to an end. The other player gets one more turn and then we add up who's got the most marshalling points. So if I get to 20 and I declare that the game is over and then Paul manages to get more than 20, he's won the game. That's what we're going to do today, isn't it, Paul, I think? Yeah, what, me winning, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Today. Oh, right, that's what we're going to do, is it? <laughs> okay, the standard <laughs> rules uses something different. Uh, the standard rules divides all of the different areas that you can get marshalling points into categories. And if you don't get any points from a category, your opponent gets double the points. So we're not going to be playing with that today, but just, just to let you know, there are, if anybody's watching this and saying, oh, you got that rule wrong, it's because we're playing with the starter rules today. Now, what I'm going to do before we go much further, uh, I'm going to just jump in and we're going to start. Um, we both get uh, Riven. Uh, in fact, if I promote you. Yep, that'd be good. Then we can copy and paste cards. So basically, uh, Rivendell. If you, if you take a copy of Rivendell, because this is where we both start, and you will notice that there is a map here. Now, the map is optional. You don't need to play the game with the map, but I like maps. Uh, and it's always nice to see where people are. So we have Gandalf and we have Saruman. We both start the game in Rivendell, which is here. Uh, and Rivendell is in Ruador, which is this, this region here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're basically, we're going to take it in turns. Now, we've already preset this up. If you are playing this game like properly and you turn up to a tournament or just to play somebody else, you actually reveal the characters one at a time because one of the cool parts of this game is there can only be one of each unique character in the game. So if I've got Legolas, Paul can't have Legolas, okay? And there is a there is a process for revealing your characters at the start of the game because you can't reveal a character that somebody else has already got. Um, so when you're building your deck, you actually have to put additional characters in there uh, in, case, in case that happens. Now, these starter decks are built in such a way that there won't be any duplication of anything that's unique. So for example, if I wanted to go to um, uh, Minas Tirith and recruit the Knights of Dol Anroth, then if Paul was also planning to do that, he can't do that because I've already done it. Okay, so a lot of the cards are unique and that's not just unique for your deck, it's unique for the for the whole game. So it does get, it does get a bit messy. If you play this game with five players, you're probably going to have people <laughs> trying to get the same thing. So we've, we've skipped that at the start of the game. Now, we need to decide who the start player is. Are we just going to roll dice? Yeah, roll dice. So who gets the highest? Well, I've rolled a three. So that, that's a good start, isn't it? Eight. <laughs> I assume you've rolled more than a three. Yeah, I've rolled three. You've I've rolled, rolled eight. eight. You've rolled an eight. Right. So Paul's going to take the first turn. Uh, and each turn is divided. Do we have a player aid? We do, don't we? We yeah, do. So the player aid is here. So you can see here that, that your, your turn is divided into a number of phases. We have the untap phase, the organization phase, long event phase, Movement hazard phase, sight phase, end of turn phase, right? That is the turn sequence there. 
We're not going to explain all of that right now. We're just going to explain it bit by bit. So the first thing that happens in Paul's turn is the untapped phase. Now we can skip that in the first turn because all of his cards are untapped. So we don't need that at all. In fact, I'm just going to take a copy of that and put it, put it here. Right, there we go. So the next thing is the organization phase. So if you look here, it says the organization phase, that the following actions can be taken in any order. Paul, do you want to bring in a new character into play? Oh, hang on, we haven't, we haven't drawn our cards. Draw, my, draw, draw eight <laughs> cards. Now, if you shuffle. Shuffle your deck and draw eight cards. Yep. There you go. There's my eight cards. So. Okay. Okay, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to use the uh, organization phase. So after the untapped phase, you've got the organization. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here I can decide to uh, let Keeley uh, follow Aragorn. Right. Because that Aragorn has got the ability to uh, look after three mind worth of points. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the way that I'm going to describe that is I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put Aragorn here. Yeah. If you want to rearrange your characters, I'll, I'll let everybody know. So at the start of the game, we've both got four characters in play. You can basically use up to what's called 20 points of general influence. So you as a wizard, you have 20 points of general influence and each of these characters costs a certain number of general influence, which is the number in the head icon in the top left. So you see Aragorn is nine, Kili is three, Merry is four, Boromir is four. So there's the 20. You don't have to spend all 20. You probably want to, I think. And that's coming from an, not an expert player at all. Um, but basically you've got 20 points of general influence to spend on your characters. What that means is because Paul started the game with all 20 points in use, he can't bring any other characters into play because he doesn't have the general influence. So what you can do is you can reorganize your party so that one character follows another one. And what you do there is you look at the number in the hand, which is three for Aragorn, that's direct influence. So Aragorn has three points of direct influence and Killy's mind is three. Therefore, Killy is following Aragorn. Now the only benefit to doing that is Paul has now freed up three points of general influence. And are you gonna use those three points of influence? So I'm just looking at my cards and yep. I'm not going to use them just at the moment. So okay. No. But there are, there are reasons, not with the cards we're playing with today, but there are definitely other cards in the game that will penalize you if you don't have any general influence spare. So the next thing to happen in your organization phase is you can, if you want to, split your company up into multiple companies. Do you want to do that? No, they're all going right. to go out at once yeah. at, at Rivendell. You probably Rivendell. don't want to do it at the start of the game, but we may do it later in the game and we'll explain that more there. But you can split your company into multiple companies. The next thing to do is you can transfer items around between your characters, but you're probably okay with that for the moment. Yeah. And then the next thing to do, the last thing in the organization phase is for each of your companies, you need to decide where they're going. Now, the way that this is done is you actually place a new site card face down to the right of your current site card. So at this point in the game, the other player doesn't know where you're going to. For our purposes, I'm not that bothered. So if you just want to play it, just 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 take a card from here. Yeah, I'm just looking on the map to... If uh, you know where you're going. Yeah, I, I want to just see where I can play a greater okay. item. Right. So there's a few places where you can play greater items uh, and the, the cards, uh, the places are Mount Gundabad, Moria and the Dead Marshes in, in this particular setup. Yeah. I'm gonna so if you look at the map and you're scared because of all of these icons, don't worry, we're not, we're not playing with the entire area. What we're doing is we're using a subset of the locations or the sites as they're called in this game. But these are the only ones that we're using for this particular game, but normally uh, when you're building your deck, you have access to all of the sites uh, and you build your deck with which sites you're going to need. Okay. Uh, so is it Isengard I'm, as I'm... well? No, you can't play greater items at Isengard. No. There's a key, isn't it, at the bottom of the map here? Um, there is. Major items, yeah, the orange. Orange ones. Okay, so, so I'm moving to Moria. Okay. You're going to go to Moria? I'm going to go to Moria. So I'm going to so, take the Moria card. So you take the, or copy the Moria card. Yes. Yeah. So take a copy of that, put it face down next to that one. Okay, right. And that is the end of Paul's organization phase. 
Now we have a long event phase, but I, I think we're going to skip that today because I believe neither of our decks have any long events in them. Is that right? Um, I, I do have some. Yep. Oh, right. Okay. So long event yeah. phase, remove yours that you played last turn and now play any new ones. Yeah. Okay. So we do have long events. Gonna, we do, but I'm not going to play anything. At the moment. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, then there is the movement hazard phase. So the movement hazard phase is special because you actually have one movement hazard phase for each of your companies. So if Paul had two companies, he would actually do a movement hazard phase for one of them and then separately do a second movement hazard phase for the other one. Okay, so um, you're just doing one movement hazard phase. The first thing you do is you turn the company site card face up. Okay, and this is basically in saying that this company is going from Rivendell to Moria. Now, mm -hmm. there are two types of movement in this game. There is something called starter movement and there is something called region movement. Now, when you're learning the game, it does recommend that you play with starter movement. And although we're playing with starter decks today, we're actually going to be using region movement because region movement, I believe, is, is the better way of playing. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility and it's not actually that much more complicated. So in region movement, you can basically go from wherever you are up to four locations away. Uh, but you have to count the, the region that you're in. So Rivendell is in Ruador, so that's one. Then you're traveling through Ruador into Holin, which is another one and then from Hollin into Redhorn Gate, which is where Moria is. So what we have here, we have regions, and within a region, there are different sites. So you see Rivendell is here, so you're leaving Rivendell, going through Ruido, through Hollin, into Redhorn Gate, and then ending you at Moria. So that is three regions, which means it's legal. You could not go to somewhere that was more than four away. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to use the standard movement. So even when you're playing with region movement, you can still use standard movement. It's a little bit, little bit tricky, but that's basically it. Now, every time you, a company moves to a new location, you see down in the bottom right here, there is the numbers two and three. That is how many cards uh, you draw, which is the number in, white, in the white box facing you, and the number in the shaded box facing your opponent is how many cards they can draw. Now, both players must draw at least one card. So I'm going to do that now. But Paul may choose to draw a second card if he wants to, and I can draw another two cards if I want to. So I'm just going to have a look at my hand of cards, um, and based on what I've got, I'm definitely going to draw another one, and just going to have a look at the site. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to draw another one as well. Okay, you will draw a lot of cards in this game. So I've drawn my, th I drew three cards. How many cards did you draw? Two. You, do, drew, you did draw two. Right, okay. Mm. Uh, why don't you want to draw all of the cards? Because surely card draw is good. It's because at the end of the movement hazard phase, you need to discard down to eight. So if I drew three cards and then didn't do anything with them, I'd have to end up discarding three cards. But it is a good way of cycling through your deck to get to the good stuff. Right. So both players draw up to the number of cards listed on um, the origin site if you are, sorry, the destination site if you're moving to a non-haven. And now we get into the really interesting part of the game. This is where I play hazards on Paul. Now remember what I said at the start of the, of the stream about um, the theme of this game? We're not attacking each other, okay? We are both on the same side effectively, but we're trying to convince the council to listen to us. But the way that it works in this game is that I have these hazard cards in hand, which are these black ones, and they represent the forces of uh, darkness, the forces of Sauron. So although I, as a player in the game, am not directly attacking Paul, well, as a, as, a, as a wizard in the game, as a player, I am. I'm using my hazard cards to prevent Paul from, from succeeding. Now, the number of hazard cards that I can play on you is equal to your company size. And a company size is one for each character, half for hobbits rounded up. So your company size is three and a half, which means I can play a maximum of four cards on him. And there are limitations on which cards I can play. And that is all based on, if we look at what's called the site path. So we can look at the, we can look at the regions here for the site path and it's these terrain types. So this is wilderness. So the site path from Rivendell to Moria is wilderness, 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 okay? And then the, the actual site type, if you look here, 
Uh, this is, is this a shadow hold? Remind me. Luria. I think this Luria is a shadow is hold, a, isn't it? Is a is a border hold. It's a border hold. It's a border right. hold. It's a it's a half and half. It's a half, half and half. half. I'm getting my uh, I'm getting my terminology. I think that's <laughs> a shadow hold. No, it's 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 a shadow hold. Border, it is a shadow border. hold. It's a, a shadow. Yeah. No border hold. No border hold is fifty fifty down the middle. It, that's what we've got. That's Moria is a shadow hold. Is it on the card here? It shows it as 50-50. Yeah. So 50-50 diagonally yes. is a shadow hold. Right. 50-50 with a line down the middle is a border hold. Uh, okay. okay. So Vertically. it's wilderness, yep. wilderness, wilderness, followed yep. by a shadow hold. Now, you okay. don't need to remember the names. You need to look at the icons. But if you noticed some of the cards in my hand, you will notice the icons on the left hand side. OK, and those icons basically tell me whether I can play that card or not. So I can play a maximum of four cards. And here we go. Which one am I going to play? Because um, I've got this, but this would count as one of my four cards. And I'm not sure whether I want to. I might save that. Yeah, I think I might save that. So I'm going to play. I'm going to play this one. OK, so this is the first of four possible cards that I can play. This is a river. So I play it on a site. If you move to this site this turn, which you have, if you do not tap a ranger, then you can't do anything in the site phase. Now, you don't have to tap a ranger now. But if when we get to the site phase, if at that point you haven't tapped a ranger, you can't do anything. OK, if you think about this thematically, basically, Paul was heading from Rivendell to Moria, came across a river. If he has a ranger in his party, then he can find a way around the river. Otherwise, he has to basically take the long way around. OK, and if we look at the characters, we can see on the right hand side or the middle right, it tells us what class they are. So Aragorn is a warrior scout ranger in Dunedan. Killy is a warrior and a scout. Merry is a scout. Uh, and Boromir is a warrior. Basically, the only uh, ranger that Paul has in his party is Aragorn. And Aragorn is like the best character. So you don't have to do that now. You can wait, you can wait till later on. But that is the first of four cards. So let's have a look to see if I want to play any more, which I do. <laughs> I'm going to play... Um, and you're basically playing as Sauron at this point. Effectively, yes. I'm, I'm now taking on the role of Sauron, send, sending, enemies, sending enemies at him. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to play this one. So I'm going to play Ghosts. Now, when you play a hazard card, uh, you basically you key it to a particular site type. So you can see on here, on the left hand side, there is uh, the, the icon in the circle is the region terrain type and the icon not in the circle is the site type. So you can see that although Paul went through Wilderness, 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 I can't play the ghost at any of those, but he has gone to Moria. Moria is a shadow hold, therefore I can play this card on him. So this is the card that I'm playing on you, and now we go into combat. Uh, Brett is asking, can he travel to Moria as the closest haven is Lorien? We're playing with region movement. But you're absolutely right, Brett. If we were playing with starter movement, you cannot go from Rivendell to Moria with starter movement. You can only go to a location uh, if you are coming from the nearest haven. But yeah, we're playing with, we're playing with region movement. Uh, Jonathan is asking me to make the cards bigger. There you go, made the cards bigger. So what happens in combat is we basically have a series of strikes. Now, this is an undead creature. Uh, it's got three strikes. And Paul, do you have a card that you want to play that will cancel this entire attack? Yep. You do? Okay. I do. Right. I have... I have concealment. Right. So if you play that, pop it on the table. OK, so that's here. All right. So tap a scout. Oh, here. Cancel. Yeah, I can put it the other way. Yeah. Uh, so this card you can see is a short attack. event. Short event is basically play the card, do what it said, and then discard it. It can only be played if you have a scout. And you tap the scout, and it cancels the attack. So not just one of the ghosts, it actually cancels the entire attack. And if you think about this thematically, this is brilliant. If you're a Tolkien fan like me, basically the ghost to come in. Uh, Merry has said, quick, hide here, hidden behind some rocks or something like that. 
the attack has been cancelled. That's it. It's gone. Really easy like that. So yeah. that goes to my discard pile. We'll mention the points in a minute. But that is two of the four cards played. So do I want to play any more cards on you? And the answer is yes. I'm going to play Barry White. Barry okay. White. <laughs> Barrow now, White. Barrow White. So the icons are the same, and I'm going to key this to Moria. Uh, this is an undead. It is one strike. So okay, are you well, going to are you going to do anything to cancel this one? Wow. Um, hmm. I don't think I am actually. Well, okay. So uh, what happens? Uh, well, actually, how many cards you played? To Three, this is my third you? card. I can play one okay. more after this. Okay, now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, can you just remind me, when you hit me with 12 and I lose um, after the roll, mm -hmm. then, I, I, then I have to wound yes. one of... Well, I have to wound the one that's not... That's gonna yeah, we, may, we make a body card. check. They may die. If they don't die, you get wounded. Yeah, okay. And because Mary is tapped, he would be at a minus one. He'd be the roll. He'd be at a minus one to the roll, but you cannot choose to assign the strike to Mary because he's tapped. Yes, you can choose. Okay, I have to choose. I have to choose an untapped. So, yeah. Right. Well, no, no, no. Sorry. You you may choose one of the untapped characters yep. to take the strike. If you don't, I can choose where the strike goes. Yeah. But what you can't do is you can't choose Merry to take the strike because he's already tapped. I think that's right. While yep. Paul's thinking, I'm just going to check that a bit, but that sounds right. That does sound right to me, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have Boromir take the attack. Okay. So what we're doing is we're using this little peg to say, there you go, on there, because it's one strike and you need to allocate the strikes before you then go into the next part. So there's this, this Barrow White has only got one strike. Boromir is taking it. And we now get to a part of the game that you might think is a little unusual for a CCG like this. We actually have dice rolling. We have dice for combat. So Boromir is facing the strike. The prowess of the Barrow White is printed at the bottom left. It's 12. Boromir's prowess is 6. Don't worry about the number after the slash for now. We'll come, on, come back to that in a minute. So Boromir's prowess is 6. Does have a shield of ironbound ash that you can tap to give you plus one prowess if you want to. Yep. You are doing, so your prowess is seven. Now, you only fight at seven if you also tap the character. If you don't, if you choose not to tap the character, you fight oh, yes. at minus oh, three. Yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. might think, well, why wouldn't you always tap the character? Well, mm. if you get to a site and all of your characters are tapped, you're not gonna be able to do anything when you get there. So you kind of want to get there while still having characters untapped. Okay, is, so you're done. Exactly, yeah. What I should have done is read the card from Moria which says automatic attack. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be facing some orcs when you get there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, if I, if I, okay. Any so cards he's you want to play? On seven. He's currently on seven, but he yeah. would be on four against 12. No, I think I have to do this. Any cards you want to play before you roll the dice? Um, good, good, good prompt. Thank you. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Because you only need five at the moment. Um, if you're seven against 12. I'm seven, I'm five, yeah. Five's not bad. Two. Five's not bad with two dice. Michaeli's in the chat, he said he's still got yeah. a D6 design for this game. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that, Paul. I'm, I'm gonna roll with him un, untapped. Untapped. So that's, that is, oh, that's minus three. Big yeah, that's no, four. No, 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 no. That's tapped is, Tapped, you're on a seven. Untapped, yeah. you're on a four. No, okay. I'm going to... Unless you play some fancy cards. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play, I'm going to play He's going dodge. To play this. So let's have a look. So dodge says, target character does not tap against one strike. But if you are wounded by this, your body check is modified by minus one. Which I think is bad. <laughs> Yeah, he's bad. Yes, I think he's but bad. I am seven. I am seven. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so I am. I am now. I am now uh, on seven. Seven against twelve. Now you roll the dice. Okay, and you've yes. done it. You've defeated okay. the Barrow White. So 
If you roll higher than its prowess, you've defeated it. And when you defeat it, if you look in the top left, it's actually worth one marshalling point. So that goes in Paul's marshalling point pile, and you can tick this up to seven. There you go. Right. Now, although that didn't tap the character, that did use a card from Paul's hand. So let's have a look now. Oh yes, I should import the gaming rules dice. Yeah, I should do that. If anybody wants to do a tabletop simulator uh, gaming rules dice for me, that would be very cool. Thank you, Jonathan, for the idea. What are these dice doing here? Physics, eh? Oh, they're the spare ones that I lost earlier on. We don't need them now. Right. <laughs> I am going to play one more card. And I am going to play Arouse Minions. So this is the fourth card. I can't play anymore. And what this does is the prowess of an automatic attack at a shadow hold or dark hold is increased by three for the end of the turn. Cannot be duplicated on a given site. So Moria, instead of it being four strikes with seven, it's four strikes with ten. Okay. That is the end of the movement hazard phase. Okay. So we now uh, remove the company's origin site. If it was tapped, you discard it. It's not discarded, no, but I'm just no. going to put it down here. I can grab it later. Yeah, oh, we can, yeah, we can grab it again if we need it. There we go. And now both players reset their hand to eight cards. Um, yeah, oh, discard or draw to right eight. Now, so. Right now, before the site... Oh. Yeah, so I've only got seven, so I'm going to draw so that I've now got eight cards. So what are you going to do? Are you going to tap Aragorn well, to, get, to get across the right, river? Well, well, hang on. Well, hang on. Uh -huh. um, we've got this... Um, yes, actually, I have to do that first. You're right. Yeah. Um, what am I so going do to do? Um, yeah. I didn't really want to, um, but it didn't work out quite the way I wanted to, but I, I have to. Um, yeah, otherwise I can't do anything at the yeah. site. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that River... There are two versions of River, and the original starting set, which is the one I've been looking at, doesn't have the Tapper Ranger. <laughs> what does it have? It has, um, it's blander than that. It's something like, uh, if you don't have a Ranger. Oh, right, okay. Never mind, that's fine. I'll right. tap Aragorn. Yeah, so you've tapped Aragorn, tapped which Aragorn. means, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this card. I skirted the river. Okay. And now, now I've entered Moria. Well, if you want to, because after, the, yeah, after do. we've done all of the movement hazard phases for all of Paul's companies, we now do a site phase, and the site phase is optional. So if you want to, now having arrived at Moria, you can enter Moria if you want to. If you do, yeah. you must face the automatic attack, which is four strikes yeah. at ten. We, we, walked, we walked a long way to get this far. You did. Your other option is that you skip a turn and stay outside and go in next turn. Because there is a race element or, to this game. Or we just run away. Oh, what? <laughs> Cancels an attack against the company, but one character of your choice in the company is wounded. Yeah, right. that, is, that is a bit of an issue. Okay. But, um, I think nice. I need that. So, um, yeah, but I'm going to play that. So basically, uh, I've escaped the automatic attack. Yeah, four very angry orcs. Four very angry... And, and also... Somebody's uh, wounded. This short event. Arouse minions goes. Yep. Um, but oh. I do have to wound somebody. So you the do. question is, who do I wound? Ah, I, uh, yeah, who do I want to wound? Mm. Not, I'm going to wound, I'm going to wound Mary. He's okay. the stoutest. He's the stoutest. So, yeah. so the way that you wound a character is you actually flip them so that they are like that. They can only heal at a haven. So Mary is going to stay wounded now until Paul's company gets back to a haven. Yeah. Right. And now, now you discover why I didn't want to tap Aragorn. Yeah, so here's the thing. Uh, Paul has successfully overcome the uh, automatic attack at the site, and the reason why he was going there is because you can now tap a character to play one resource card, which can either be an item, an ally, or a faction, or information, but we don't have information in, in our decks. So, Yeah, so I'm going to tap Boromir. Tap Boromir to bring into play the scroll of Isildur. Now, how is Paul able to play this here? If you look on the right-hand side, it says that this is a greater item. And if you look at Moria, under the playable, it says items, minor, major, greater, and gold rings. So if Paul went somewhere other than Moria, 
he wouldn't be able to play the Scroll of Isildur. Basically, the more dangerous a site is, uh, the better items that you can play there. So Paul didn't just go to Moria randomly. He went to Moria because this card was in his hand. And that's what this game is about. You look at the cards you've got in your hand and you work out where you need to go to be able to play the items or the allies or whatever you've got in your hand. So the Scroll of Isildur goes on Boromir. Yes. And Boromir. you've got four marshalling points. Yep. So I can... Wow. One, two, three, four. Now, we are playing with the corruption rules, aren't we? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're the boss. Be we are. <laughs> because the corruption value is printed in the bottom right-hand corner. And Boromir now has four points of corruption. Now, at various times in the game, and you will see this a lot more with other decks, um, characters will be forced to make a corruption check. And if they fail a corruption check, well, we all know what happened to Boromir. Um, yeah. So, yeah, basically, Boromir is carrying four points worth of, uh, uh, well, yeah, four, he's got four points of corruption from the items that he's got. Um, there are things that you can do about that. You can give your items to other players, but you have to make a corruption check because they might say no. Or you can store some of your items in a haven, which basically means you've, you've got the points for them, but no character is going to suffer the corruption of them. So but that's a nice early boost. Yeah, it was nice. That was a, that was a lucky draw, really. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, if there, there is another thing in the rules. Um, if a card from step two was successfully played, you must tap the site. So if, because Paul was successful in finding something, he taps the site. Uh, and if you wanted to, if you had a, a minor item in hand, you could tap another character to play a minor item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I don't think our decks have any other minor items in them. Okay. No. Can I can I just uh, a rules question? Yep. Um, because that's tapped, mm -hmm. um, that when I move again, it's going to be discarded. Discarded. That so means I can't go to it. Can you go to it? I can go to it. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you room, can't you go room. back to Moria, but I okay. but I can. Yeah, fine. Unless you're playing the two deck game where you go through your deck twice and then you can revisit places that you went to the first time round. Anyway, we're not playing that today. No. So now we go okay. into your end of turn phase. So in the end of turn phase, both players may discard one card from hand if you want to. And then we reset our hands to eight cards. So we need to have a look at our cards. And this is the difficult decision because you're looking at your cards and you're thinking, well, these are all good. But <laughs> sometimes, yeah. So I'm looking at mine and I'm thinking, I want that one. I want that one. I need those ones for your next turn. Um, do I want that one? Let's have a look at my characters. Okay, I think I want that one as well. So actually, this is, I don't want this one at the moment. So I'm, I'm going to discard this one. I'm going to cycle through my deck a bit quicker. Uh, and I'll tell you why I've discarded that one in a minute. I think officially discards are supposed to be face down. I'm leaving him face up. I'm not that worried about it. And then I'm going to draw a replacement card. Right. Have you reset back to eight cards? Yeah, I've drawn two. Right. So it's now my go. So there you go. Dead simple. Uh, we do the untap phase. I don't do anything there. Organization phase. I'm going to play Saruman. So I mentioned at the start of the game, I'm actually playing the role of Saruman. Saruman is a card in my deck. In fact, you can play, I think, with up to three of your wizard in your deck in order to increase the chances of them coming out. Uh, and in the organization phase, I can play my, my, my character. Now, your wizard is a very, very powerful character. For a start, he doesn't use any general influence because he's me. But he also, if you look at that, he's got 10 points of direct influence. Now, what that means is as soon as Saruman comes into play, I can basically say, um, well, first of all, I'm going to unlock this scoring marker and just move it up there. I'm going to put Saruman there. So Legolas and Eladan, who have got mind values of six and four, they are following Saruman. So what that means is I've actually got 10 points of general influence unused at the moment. Um, now, the, the difficulty of, oh, sorry, the danger of bringing your wizard into play um, is that if your wizard dies, you lose the game. So there are, there are pros and cons. It's a very, very powerful character. But I think if your wizard dies, it, it, it's game over. 
So that's the character that I've chosen to, brought, to bring into play. Do I want to split my party into two? And the, and the reason is because now I've now got Saruman in play. I, I could quite easily, like I could put it here and I could have these three going off and doing one thing and these two going off and doing something else. And because the game is a, effectively a race game, the first one to 20 points, if I had loads of stuff in my hand uh, where I could, you know, I, I could basically get twice as much stuff if I split up, then I might be tempted to do that. But I'm not. So instead, I'm going to choose to go to... Let me just have a look, because I've got a plan. So I think I'm going to go to... Uh, let me have a look what else I've got in hand. Yeah, I'm going to go to Mount Gundabad, which isn't as bad as it sounds. So Mount Gundabad is uh, here. It's in, believe it or not, Gundabad. Uh, and I'm going to choose a path. Uh, well, I'm supposed to do this face down secretly. Where's Mount Gundabad? Here. There we go. I have chosen that I am going to here. Right, so that's the end of my organisation phase. Now we go to the, um, the long event phase. I don't have any resource long events in play. Um, can, you, can you show me the path, please? Yeah, well, we're not at that stage yet. We're just at the long events. I'm not going to play any. So now we go into the movement hazard no, but phase. I, I agreed, but I want to play a long event, and it would depend on your path. Ah, well, you don't know where I'm going yet. Forget the fact that I said Mount ah. Gundabad. You're not supposed oh, okay. to know that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yes, of course, it's played face down. It's played face down, and the mm. long event phase happens before it's revealed. Oh, wow. Uh, Now, so if your card is a hazard long event, you don't play that now. Do I not? No. Hazard long events are played as hazards in my movement hazard uh, phase. Okay, okay. That would make some sense. Yeah, so it's, it's, only, okay. it's only resource long events. Right. Yeah, right. Nope. I'm now going to reveal the card. I'm going to Mount Gundabad, and I'm going from uh, Rudu, and we're going to go through uh, Wilderness. We're going to go through, um, so I've actually got two ways of doing this. I could go through Wilderness, Wilderness, Borderland, uh, Dark, what's it called? Dark Domain, and then end up at a, a Shadow Hold. Or I could go Wilderness, Shadowland, Dark Domain, Shadow Hold. I'm going to go that way. Yeah, so that's my route. I'm, I'm going uh, from Rivendell through Ruda, which is Wilderness, into Angmar, which is a Shadowland, into Gundabad, which is a Dark Domain, and then ending up at Mount Gundabad, which is a uh, Shadow Hold. My company size is unfortunately four and a half, rounded up to five. So Paul can play five cards on me. Do your worst. Okay. Prepare yourself. Hmm. Uh, okay, Hang on. So, drawing um, of cards. Drawing of cards. I get to draw one or two. Paul gets to draw one, two, or three. So I'm definitely drawing one. Yeah, can we, can we look at the cards as we draw them? So yes, can... I believe yeah. so. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw a second one. Yeah. Yeah, so I've drawn two cards. Okay. Yeah, the card cycling in this game is a lot. You know, when you think back to old CCGs where it was like draw one card a turn, in this game, you will be drawing three, four, five cards each turn, but your decks are generally quite big in this game. Yeah, I've drawn three. Right. So off you go. Do your worst. Five, up to five okay. hazards you can play on me. So a long event. Oh, right. So the first one is a long event. So this is actually going to stay in play for the whole of my turn and the whole of Paul's turn, and then it's going to disappear at the start of Paul's next turn. So this basically means that Orcs are angrier and tougher than they were. The minions have been stirred. They have. And as you were going through, let's have a look at these. Oof. Oof. Unfortunately, there is Orcs at Mount Oh, I like it. There are lots of Orcs on the way. Um, there's even Orc Raiders. Well, I know your deck. Yeah. <laughs> so you're playing this card. Now you can choose which type of terrain to, to... In fact, no, you can't. 
Although the Orc Raiders Friday. can be played in wilderness and borderlands, if you look at my path, I did not go through the borderland. I went through wilderness, uh, shadowland, dark domain. Okay. So okay. you have to tie it to the wilderness. Um, now that can be important because there are certain cards which work in particular ter uh, terrain settings. Yep. So yep. you're keying it to the wilderness and this is normally four strikes at six, but because of the minion stirring, it's five strikes at seven. Yeah, so five strikes at seven. Okay, now. It's worth one point if I manage to defeat it. So I'm going to look at the cards in my hand. And I also have Elven Cloak. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm not cancelling the attack. Okay, so I'm taking the attack. It's five strikes. I have five untapped characters. So I put one on each. You are not allowed to put multiple strikes uh, onto a single character. There are rules if there are more strikes than characters. We'll get to those later on if it happens. Is there a solo mode uh, is being asked in the chat. Yes, there is. Um, we're, we're obviously not playing that today and I've not read the rules for the solo mode, but there is a solo mode included um, yeah, in the various source books that you might be able to find for this game. Okay, so now I'm going to go through my characters one at a time. And the first one I'm going to use is Pippin because Pippin has an Elven Cloak. So I can tap the Elven Cloak to cancel one strike against the bearer. Now, if you remember what Paul did earlier on, he played a Concealment card. Concealment cancelled the attack, the whole attack. Whereas Elven Cloak, all it does is it cancels the strike. So I'm going to tap that like so. I'll set my rotation degrees to 90. Um, and that is that strike cancelled, right? Pippin is safe. The downside is because I have cancelled that strike, I can't get the points for this card. In order to get the points for the card, you have to defeat every single strike. So I'm, I'm not getting the points for that card now. Okay, let's look at my other characters. Let's do Gimli next. Uh, so Gimli um, has got five prowess, but he gets plus two against orcs. So he's actually fighting at seven. Seven against seven. I'm not going to tap. So I'm not going to tap Gimli, which means I'm at minus three. So I'm four versus seven. Yep, so that's that strike defeated. Uh, next, I'm going to do Eladan. Eladan is six against Orcs. So again, I'm not going to tap. So I'm fighting at three against seven. Uh, yep, that's that one done. So that's that strike defeated. Next, we'll do Legolas. Now, Legolas is only five, but I am carrying the Dagger of Western Essence, so that's six. So, yeah, Legolas is also not going to tap. So I'm fighting at three. Yep, that's that defeated. And Saruman. Let me just check my cards in hand. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, Saruman is at six. You've played two cards, haven't you? You've got three more cards I've to play. Two. I'm allowed to play three more. And there is an automatic attack, which is actually... Yeah, it's quite dangerous. Okay, so Saruman is not going to attack. Uh, sorry, he's not going to tap. This could be a very short game. Because if Saruman <laughs> gets killed here, game over. Um, which is a little risky. But no, Saruman is not going to tap. So again, I'm fighting at three. Oh dear. <laughs> Those pesky orcs. Well, he's not dead, but he's wounded. No. But we now have to make what's called a body check. So every time a character gets wounded, the other player makes a body check. So, Paul, you roll two dice, and if you get more than a nine, then it, it's Ooh. actually game over. So hopefully you won't get a nine. Oh, nine. You got a nine. Nine. Wow. Yeah, body check. Let me just check this. I mean, to be honest, I think we should fudge it, even if you did. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If the value is greater than the, attack, than the character's body, the character is eliminated, and then it, it would be game over for me. Um, so, yeah, so Saruman is wounded. Whew. Okay, the current yeah. tournament rules are that you... Uh, so this is tournament rules, slightly different from the standard rules, uh, are that instead of an instant loss, you actually lose five marshalling points. That's, that's, that's better. It, it's better. better, but surely if your wizard loses, if, if you lose your wizard, 
it's effectively game over. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank you for that. I did read that. I did read that somewhere and I couldn't remember, but that's tournament rules. Anyway, that is that card dealt with. I didn't kill it, so I didn't defeat all of the strikes, so I don't get the point. So that goes to your discard pile. And that was two cards of five. Yep. Right, any more? Of course. Because there is a bit of a bluffing element in this game. Of course. Okay. Um, uh, well, seems you like so, th so that's much. that's my question for Theonis in the chat is has anybody ever lost their wizard and still won the game? Oof. That is the question. Good right, question. Orc Raiders. Now, again, these are tied to the wilderness, so this is again five strikes. Yeah. Five strikes at seven. So, first of all, I choose which of my untapped characters want to take the strikes, and I am going to choose these. And then, because there is still one strike left, Paul chooses which of my other characters takes the remaining strikes. Now, in this case, there's no choice, it goes on to Saruman. But if I had two other characters, Paul would choose which one of them faces the strike. Okay. And Theoni says, yes, somebody has lost their wizard in a tournament game and still managed to win the game. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so five strikes at seven. Yep, five at seven. Okay. I'm going to do Gimli first because I'm confident with Gimli, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gimli is at seven against Orcs and he's not going to tap. So he's fighting at four. Come on, Gimli. Yeah, so that is defeated. So I'm going to put it on there. That's just to show us it's defeated. I'm going to do Legolas next. Am I? No, I'm going to do Eladan next. Eladan is at six against Orcs. And again, is not going to tap. So I'm at three. Yes. Yeah, that's that done. That's that defeated. Right, next. Ooh. We're going to do Pippin next. Uh, Pippin is at one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's used his cloak uh, already. Yes. Re I mean, yeah, realistic, because the hobbits were not really great fighters. So Pippin is going to tap. Okay. So he fights at one. Uh, so let's roll the dice. Let's just have a look. Pippin's characters. Let's have a look at my... Yeah. Okay. Really could, really Here we go. So we're fighting. We're at one. Go on. Oh, Get in, Pippin. Great. Look at that. Right. So that's that one dealt with. So I'm going to do Saruman next. Now, Saruman doesn't have a choice. Saruman cannot tap, um, but he fights at minus two because he's already wounded. So he's actually fighting at four. Um, Yeah. Okay. It's four. Here we go. Can't do it again. No, four plus not. five is nine. Yes. Yep. He's done it. He's done that. Right. Which means we've got Legolas left. So Legolas is at six. Um, and I, got a, uh, I am going to play a card. I'm going to play warrior only. The warrior does not tap against this strike. Legolas is a warrior. So I'm basically fighting at six and not tapping i don't actually need to roll i've done it yeah. anyway so that's all yeah. five strikes defeated which means nice. i get the points so nice one point i've got that card that is mine right that was your third card yeah <sighs> off you go um, then do we have any more oh of course we do oh this is the dark lord we're talking about right now these are nasty cards and one thing that I'm going to mention now, because a lot of you might be watching this who are familiar with other card games where there is a cost to play the cards, and the better the card, the higher the cost. In this game, there is no cost to play the cards. But if we just compare that one that Paul's just played to this one, you will see that this one is four strikes at six. This one is five strikes at eight. Well, this is just a much better card. The, it's balanced because this card can only be played at these locations. So if I didn't go to these locations, that would be a dead card in Paul's deck and he would have to cycle it out because I wasn't going to those locations. As it is, I have gone to those locations. So actually, this is really bad for me because this is six strikes at nine. 
Okay, and I don't have any way of cancelling it. So what happens now, you are going to see it. This is good for the purposes of teaching you how to play because I put those three on there. Paul then puts these two on here and there is one strike left. So what happens is there can only ever be one strike on a character, but if there are extra strikes available, they are applied as minus one modifiers to the character and you choose where they go. So which character is going to get a minus one? Yes, Jonathan, it does have solo. Give me a shout afterwards and I will, I will or just Google it. Middle Earth collectible card game, solo mode. There, you can play it solo. Right, so you've put it on Gimli. Okay, and now I'm fighting. So these are, these are, this is nine. This is nine. This is five at nine. And the reason I played this last, of course, or maybe not even last, but even where I did was to soften up the other guys first. Yeah. So I, I'm now wondering whether I'm actually going to enter Mount Gundabad because I've got one more card to play. You've potentially yeah. got one more card to play, but even, even if I get through this, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do Saruman first because this is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the tough one. So we're fighting against nine and Saruman is fighting at four because he's already, um, he's already wounded. So here we go. We're going to do Saruman first. Yes, that's defeated. Right. We're then going to do Pippin next. Now, Pippin is fighting at uh, minus one because he's already tapped. Is that right? Yep. Minus I think one. it is. Yeah. So he's actually fighting at zero and I need a nine. Oh, um, didn't get it. Right. So if you tie, wounded. what happens is uh, you haven't defeated the strike, but you've kind of fought it off. Uh, and the strike is negated, but you don't get the points. In this case, I've got an eight and I needed nine. So what happens is Pippin is wounded and you get to make a body check against nine. That's the thing with the hobbits. They're not very good at fighting, but they are Hardy. tough. Yeah, failed. You I failed. Think. Right, so Pippin yep. is wounded. That's that strike gone. So we don't, I don't bother need to track him anymore because I can't get the points for this. Uh, let's do Gimli next. So Gimli is fighting at five, plus two because he's against orcs, seven, but minus one because of the extra strike. So he's actually fighting at six. Um, I'm not going to tap. Oof. I'm not going to tap Gimli and we're fighting at three. Yeah, done. Okay, <laughs> next, Eladan. Eladan is fighting at six. Uh, Eladan is also not going to tap. Wow. So again, I'm fighting at three. Yeah, done. And then Legolas. I think Legolas is going to chicken out and Legolas is going to tap. So I'm fighting at six. As long as I don't get a double one. Yeah, we're done. Right. Yep. Yep. But I didn't get the points. You can have that card back. Okay. Right, you can play one more card. Do you have one more card? Yes. This is the problem with a big company. And the reason, the reason I'm playing it is because you've left one card, well, two cards untapped. If you okay. had nobody tapped, if, if they were all tapped, then you couldn't yeah. do what you needed to do. Okay. So I wouldn't have played it. So that is the end of the movement hazard phase. I now discard Rivendell, and we both draw up to eight cards. Now I have eight cards, so I don't do anything. You've presumably got fewer than eight cards because you've yeah. <laughs> just played five played against me. <laughs> okay, so now we go into the sight phase and I decide if I want to enter Mount Gundabad or not. Bearing in mind the minions are aroused and stirring. So it would actually be, what would it be? It would be three strikes at nine. It would be three strikes at 12. Uh, three at... Yeah. 11. Oh yeah, it is 12, yeah. Eight, oh, nine, 10, 11, 12. Three at 12, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's not do that. Are you sure? I'm sure. So arouse minions goes to your discard pile, but this stays in play because this is a long event. This is going to stay in play for the whole of Paul's turn as well. 
Now, what that means is these cards can actually be double-edged swords. Because if I was playing an Orc Hazard deck as well, I'm not, but if I was, then that's actually going to count uh, against him. Yes, that was Aroused Minions. <laughs> right, so I, I'm not doing my site phase. I'm not entering, which means we go straight to my end phase. Um, which means we can both discard a card if we want to. And I'm, I'm not going to discard a card. Would you like to discard a card and then draw a new one? Um, I'm just looking at my card just to see if I do want to do that, okay. actually. Uh, I, hmm. Wow. Yeah, I'm not well. Yeah. Well, while you're thinking, I'll give everybody a recap of what's happened in round one. So, previously, on Middle Earth the card game, uh, Gandalf decided to take a trip through Ruador, through Holland, and into Moria. Um, Merry used concealment to avoid uh, an initial attack, then he fought a few orcs, uh, no, he fought, fought, uh, escaped from some, from ghosts, uh, fought a Barrow White and everything else, and then, uh, who was it who wounded themselves? Merry. Merry. It was Merry who valiantly wounded himself in order to escape from the hordes of orcs in Moria that were attacking, and then delved down into the depths and came out with the scroll of Isildur, which gave to Boromir, who's looking at it with a glint in his eye. That was what <laughs> happened to Gandalf. Meanwhile, Saruman arrived. Uh, well, that, yeah, that, that was Gandalf's party. Gandalf is not currently there. Meanwhile, Saruman arrived at Rivendell and said, hello, come and follow me. Took a trip all the way through here and came across more orcs than you've ever seen before. Um, got to Mount Gundabad and went, nah, it's too dangerous. I need to lie down. So that was the end of the first round of the game. <laughs> It is now round two, and it is your untap phase. Okay. So, this character, un uh, this character, Boromir untaps. Oops. I didn't mean to, uh, to draw. Your him. shield untaps, but Merry is wounded. Merry does not untap. Doesn't. No. Only at Haven. Down... Okay. You, you can only heal okay. at Havens. Right. Okay. Yep. Right. So that's your untap phase done. So now we do the organization phase. Now I think, you know, I mentioned splitting your party. I think you can only do that at a haven. I'm just going to check that while you do your stuff. Mm. And it might have changed, it might be different between the two rules. I'm not um, going to split the party anyway. You're not going to anyway? So I'm not, not going to do it anyway. Right. Next. Companies can combine at a haven. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm going to stay as one. I'm going to stay okay. as one company anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to uh, then face down. Play a, play a face down card here. Play a face down. Oops. Yeah. Now, in the starter rules. Now, remember, we're not playing with the starter rules, but in the starter rules, you can only ever go from a haven to a site, and then from a site back to a haven. With the region movement rules, which we're using today, the standard rules, uh, you can actually go from any site to any other site. You might still want to go back to the Haven because that's where you go to, uh, you can play new characters and you can heal and things like that. Um, but yeah, you don't have to. You could go from one site to another. That's been played. Right, now we go into the resource long event phase. Do you want to play a resource long event? No. Okay, uh, the shield should be untapped. Thank you. So, yes. Yes. Now we do the movement hazard phase. You reveal it. You are moving to a haven. So if you're moving to a haven, you actually draw cards based on the site that you came from rather than the site that you're going to. The reason why there are numbers on the haven, that's if you're traveling from one haven to another. So again, uh, we both must draw one card. You can then draw an extra one and I can draw an extra two. Ah, oh, there's something I've there's something I've missed, Paul. What have missed you missed? On the, I missed on the first turn as well. Okay. There's a card I've got in a card I've got in hand which I wanted to play the first, and I missed it. I've missed it again. It needs to be played at the end of the organisation. Oh, go on, phase. play it now. Play it now. That's fine. Okay. So okay. this gets a bit of protection. Right. Okay. So you have to tap a ranger to do this. The end of the organization, yes. Yeah, so he's yep. been untapped. Mm, yes, I didn't read that far. <laughs> but if you're going to a haven, it, it's fine. It's fine because I can. He can. He can. He, yeah, I'm going to untap him next turn. So yeah. that's okay. Fine. 
So again, thematically, if you think about what this is, Aragorn has used his time and effort to basically find a ford. What that means is I cannot play any hazard creatures keyed to wilderness for this entire turn. Okay, and then you've revealed Rivendell, so your sight path is yeah. wilderness, 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 and then you end up at a haven. So I can only play uh, hazards against a wilderness, 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 and a haven. There are no hazards against a haven, uh, and I can't play one against wilderness because of that. Because of this card, yeah. So basically, um, I can so play... Wait, wait, wait. This is discarded. Uh, not quite yet. We're still in the not movement hazard yet. phase. Sorry. So I can play four cards, but Sorry. yeah. Oh dear. Right. I'm. I'm. I'm not playing any cards then. Wow. Yeah. I. I play zero cards. Okay. Oh, oh no! But then I've got to discard. Oh. Down. Back down to eight. Yeah. We can draw. In fact, we can draw I, up to three. Did you draw then? Did I draw? I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't draw. I, th I, I thought gonna, I, I am drew. going to draw. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got I, nine I cards in hand. You have. So okay. yeah. So at the end of your movement hazard phase, I now need to discard a card. Okay. I'm going to discard that one. Okay. So we're back to eight, and now it's the sight phase. You generally skip the site phase when you're going to Havens because there is actually nothing to do at a Haven in the site phase. So now so you can discard Moria, goes. Moria that, go, that goes. You can't go to Moria again. Um, and then, yeah, you've, you've arrived at Rivendell. So that's the yep. end of your turn. Yep. End of turn phase. Both players can discard a card. Now, you might think, oh, well. And, and the thing about discarding a card at the end of the turn is it's about to go into my turn, and on my turn I need good cards. And as you can see, I don't have any cards for me. Well, that doesn't bode well for me next turn. Oh no, next turn you're going to be absolutely cream. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're really going to get it next turn. But this turn... I am discarding. I can't. I'm... Oh, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm not going to discard. I'm going to take a risk. Scott is saying this looks like a starter deck. This is very much the starter deck. These are really, really simple cards. This is the starter deck. Uh, this isn't a full, full game. I mean, we're playing a full game of it, but we're not using all of the rules. Uh, and yeah, these are like the simplest cards. Okay, so untap phase. That untaps. Pippin doesn't untap because he's wounded. Saruman doesn't untap because he's wounded. Uh, that untaps. And I'm now going to do... I, I'm not going to play a new card in the, at the end of the organization phase. Ah. Okay. So what that means is because I so didn't move. Where you are. Yeah, because I didn't move, uh, no cards are drawn. If, if the company doesn't move, no cards are drawn. But you can still play hazards against me, but only keyed to the site type, which is in the top left of the card. Because I didn't travel, I didn't go through any terrain, but I am at Mount Gundabad, which is a shadow hold. So right. you could play cards keyed to shadow hold. Oh, minion stir should now have gone. Yes, because it lasted for all of my turn and all of your turn. That's now discarded. Yep. That's my discard, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will. I'm awaiting um, these cards. Yeah, get ready. William. Uh oh, it's one of the trolls. Wuluag. Yes, yeah. troll. Okay. So, and again, this is a unique card. So once, uh, I believe, once William has been defeated in the game, he can't be played at all by anybody in the game. Mm. Um, so, it's one strike at 11. Okay, so who's going to take the strike? Well, do I have any characters that are good against trolls? I don't. The pin would be good. What, against trolls? <laughs> If I had a certain card in hand, um, yeah, the Elven Cloak is only good if it's Wilderness. Oh, of course, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yep, yeah. thank you. Oh, hang on, I did have a card to play, sorry. 
We gave you an undo, so we're we're giving me an undo. Yep. Yeah. I had this Hobbit only. Uh, play during the organization phase. Move from wounded to well and untapped in his organization phase. So yeah, there we go. Which means one fewer card in hand, but yeah. So okay. That wouldn't have changed what you were doing, would it? No, no, no. no. Okay, right. I'm, I'm going to take the strike on Gimli. Gimli's going to take the strike, and I am going to tap. So I'm fighting at... S no, hang on. Oh, oh. No. Legolas. Legolas is going to do it, and he's fighting at six, because he's got the dagger. Yep. Okay? And he's tapping, yep. so I get... I, I, I'm fighting at six... Against 11. Got it. Yes. So, dead, and I get the point. Indeed. Go. So that goes there. I'm now on eight. Right, that was your first card. Yep. And, um... Yep, the second card is just a short event. Okay. Which makes these makes orcs the bigger. Automatic attack. Yeah. Makes them okay. Bigger. Anything else? No. Okay. I mean, the odds are, because you had so many last time, yes. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for fewer. <laughs> so now we have the sight phase. I choose whether I want to enter Mount Gundabad or not. I, I've got to, really. But because of the minion, the aroused minions again, um, it's actually two strikes at 11. Gulp. Big. Wow. Two strikes at 11. So Gimli's going to take one of them. Eladon's going to take another one. Both of the characters are going to tap. Thing is, Paul, um, yep. you, you mentioned earlier about the, the card draw. One of the wonderful things about this game is that the card draw does give you so many opportunities and yes. possibilities. Yeah. Uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can get really lucky and unlucky. Like, you could draw eight good mm. cards and then the opponent, yeah, you can't play anything. You know, it, it does have that, but there is a bit of card cycling. So Gimli first, uh, I shouldn't have tapped both of them. Gimli first is fighting at five against, sorry, no, seven against 11. So, oh, failed. Dice are not with me tonight. Wow. Right, you get to make a body check. More than an eight and I'm dead. Eight, eight. Not an eight. No, didn't even so, dent his shield. So Gimli is wounded. Um, that's that strike done. And then Eladan is fighting at five, six, and he is tapping. Done. Yeah. Now, I didn't need to defeat all of the strikes in order to be able to enter. Um, I, I just had to face the strikes, which I've done. So I've now got to Mount Gundabad. And Pippin is the only character left... This is why you need untapped characters when you get somewhere. So Pippin is going to tap, and I'm going to tap the site to bring into play Orcrist, which is a greater Ooh. item worth four marshalling points. Wow. Right? But it's Pippin who's carrying it, because you've got to give it to the <laughs> character who found exactly. it. Now, you can rearrange them later, um, but yeah. yeah. So here's yeah. a question for people in the chat. Whose who sword in the actual Tolkien lore was all Christ's. Uh Yeah, pop that answer in the chat. You can get five gaming rules points if you get the answer right. <laughs> okay, that's the site phase done. End of turn phase. We can both discard one card if we want to, and then we draw back up to our hand size. And then it's your go, round three. This is great. This is really good. Yeah. Uh, James is correct. It is Thorin's sword. So yes, five points, five gaming rules points to James. Okay, I've yep. drawn. Uh, so, yeah, your turn. Untap. Okay, untap. And so Merry, Merry heals. heals. So he's still tapped, but he's, he's, he's no longer wounded. Right. Right. Uh, Do you want to uh, store an item? Do you want to uh, give yeah. your items to other players? Okay. okay, so some things I want to do, yeah. So I want yeah. to store. I want to store my... Uh, Okay, nice now this. we've not done this in any of the test games that we've played. <laughs> no. and you don't normally use this in the, start, in the starter rules, but we're going to use it now. 
Yeah, storing items, page 28. Page 28, here we go. During your organization phase, you may store any of your items that are at a Haven's, you may store any of your items that are at a Haven site. The controlling character must make a corruption check. Okay, so Boromir, as we know, is not good with her whole corruption. So if you look at his card, it actually is minus one to all minus of his corruption one. checks. And you've got four points of corruption. Okay, so if you want to store the Scroll of Isildur, you're going to have to make a corruption check. Okay. Okay. Can you just uh, can you show me where the four points are? It's the three points on the item, and the minus one on Boromir. His, his shield. Right? Oh, the shield. His shield oh, is one. Shield. Every item in the game is all okay, is all corruption yeah, yeah. points. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. a corruption okay. check to make a corruption check. What what we do mm. is, um, when a card or other effect indicates that one of your characters must make a corruption check, you roll two d six. You add any appropriate modifiers. If your result is greater than the character's corruption point total, nothing happens. If it's the same, then, uh, sorry, if it's the same or one less, then the character has failed the corruption check and you must discard the character along with all non-follower cards that he controls. And if it's your wizard, you lose the game. Uh, or if the modified result is less than the character's corruption point total by two or more, the character fails the corruption check and is eliminated. So rather than discarded, is eliminated. Now, for the purposes of this game, that doesn't make much difference. Right, um, yeah. But Aragorn, for example, it says on it, minus Aragorn three if eliminated. So there would be a difference mm. with Aragorn disappearing off into the wilds with his nice sword, or if he was actually eliminated. Yeah. Um, so Okay. So, uh, and the reason for storing is so that I don't lose the points should Boromir die. Is yes. That right? uh, well, should he, because if he dies, you can transfer an item to somebody else. Uh, ah, it's so okay. that Boromir doesn't have him, because you know that I'm playing Barrow Whites and Ghouls yeah. and Ghosts. They cause characters to make corruption checks. So it's safer against the deck that I'm playing to store the item so that you bank the four points and don't, don't then lose them. Yeah, because you can steal the points, can you? Say again? Can you steal the points then if you were to defeat Boromir? Uh, no. But I lose them anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like, I'm going to do the corruption check because we've not okay. done that before. So, so you roll two I'm, dice, I'm you minus against, one. I'm rolling against. But before you do, before you do, corruption check yeah. modifiers. So certain characters receive modifiers. Okay. And if you want to, I believe, although this isn't in the rules, I thought you could tap other characters to help protect you. Where have, I, where have I remembering that rule from? I don't remember that. Because it's not in here. I thought you could tap other characters, hmm. but no, it's not in there. No, no, I don't so see it. forget that. I'm, I'm obviously misremembering that rule from 20 years ago. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> okay, so I'm basically rolling. Ah, combat modifiers. You can tap other characters in support in combat. I'd forgotten that. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, Victor is asking, will this get a reprint? No, unfortunately, this game is 21, 22 years out of print and will never get a reprint because the, the license has gone. So basically, your corruption point total is four. You're rolling with a minus, minus one. one. So if it's you get a five, five or a six, this is, this is bad. This is quite high, isn't it? This is, yeah. Well, it's yeah. the scroll of Isildur. <laughs> yeah, quite risky. Okay, so Theonis says you can tap characters for plus one to... I thought so. It's just not on page 25 of my book. So yeah, I, me I remembered it correctly. Thank you very much for confirming. So do you want to? Do you want to tap other so characters? I can, so I can tap Aragorn. No, I can, tap, I can actually tap Keely. You can tap Keely yeah. to give Boromir a plus one. Give Boromir a buff. A buff. I think that's Where is that in this rule book then? I haven't seen that in there. Before. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm reading the starter rules. Ah, yes, it's in the starter rules. Right, and we're playing standard rules. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No worries. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to. So Keely's going to come to the help. So that He's cancels to... Boromir's innate minus one. Minus one. And Off so you go I'm then. Rolling. Okay, here we go. Make the roll. Fine. Oof. Okay, absolutely fine. So the item is Store that stored. There. And basically, I think yep. you just put it in your. My, yeah. Marshalling points. Stored items are placed in your marshalling point pile and still count for marshalling points. Once an item is stored, 
it may not be unstored. And the one ring cannot be stored. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be a... There's so much flavor in this. It's great. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, so, um, so that's my... Um... I'm, I'm actually at Rivendell. You are at Rivendell. Um, are you going to go yeah. somewhere else? I'm going to no. I'm going to do something else first. Think, oh, I'll just bring my character. Um, yeah, I'll bring my uh, prompt up. So I want to, I want to play Gandalf. Ah, Gandalf's coming into play. Right. Gandalf's coming in now. Gandalf okay. has. Uh, so now I want to do some organisation really. Um, so organising Gandalf has ten, and uh, that means Boromir and. Uh, that means Boromir and Merry, perhaps. I think that makes some sense. Yeah, I think I'm going to have Gandalf looking after Boromir and Merry. Okay, so they're going to follow him. Okay. Which gives me plenty more. Um, and it also gives me two parties. Um, okay. So that's probably it. So now I need to decide where to go. Um, hmm. Seven. Yeah, seven cards. You know what you said about you could draw something where you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't really go somewhere. That's probably the case. So I'm going to head off in the right direction and hope I draw cards, I think. Okay. Um, there's no point staying at a... a uh, the forge should a, be a gone now as well. Yeah. There, is, there is very little point at staying you can't, at a haven. can't do anything at a haven other than... Can bring I characters untap? in. Yeah, can I untap? That's it, really. Bring more characters. So I'm going to move. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to move to the Prancing Pony. Off to Bree. Oh, okay. Off, off Not off that I know that yet. So you put no, the card face okay, down here. Know that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Let's try and get this right. I'm basically voicing it out loud so you can tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. <laughs> this one. That sounds good. That's, there we go. Okay, so that goes face down. And then is that the end of your organization phase? Um, yeah, so, so basically Gandalf has got these two followers. Yep. Okay, and, uh, and the other, so I've got two parties. Yes. All right. Oh, two um, parties? Are you splitting? Oh, oh, sorry, I'd need to go to two places then, wouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, right, oh, so you have party oh, no, number that's, one. That's, that's, that's tricky. Let's get these out of the way. So party number one is at Rivendell. Party number two is at Rivendell. Party number one is going here. Oh, sorry. Company number one is going here. And where yeah. is company number two going? Um, let's have a look on the map. Uh, Mikel has got to go because it's getting late. Thank you very much for joining in. Okay. I'm going to head. I want to head south. Okay. So I'm going to go south and. Probably it's probably this is probably really bad strategy, but um, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off south. So I'm gonna grab. And this is all about card draw, really. I, this is probably suicide. This is probably not a good way to play. Um, well, we will see. You yeah. certainly got a good start by having a. I got a, I got a good start, and yeah, definitely I got a good don't start. Don't have what I need in my hand at the moment, so I've yeah. got to draw it. So I might as well just try it and. The more places you go, the more you draw, isn't it? So, yep. Uh, can't find the card I'm after, though. Uh, there it is. Got it. Brilliant. Yeah. That goes face down there. That, that's going to go there. And, okay. Uh, he's so, go that's there. the end of your organization phase. That's it. So, now we go into the long event phase. Do you want to play a resource long event? I don't want to play a resource long event. Okay. So now movement hazard phase. So each of your companies is treated separately. Which company do you want to do first? Uh, well, let's do the one on the left first. Okay. So you're heading to Edoras. Edoras. Now Edoras is in Rohan, which is uh, here. And to get there from Rivendell... Oh, hang on. I did that wrong. Yeah, I've I got don't... to go to... I don't Ithilien think you can first. get there from Rivendell. No, I've done that wrong. I need to go to Ithilien first, don't I? I chose the wrong card. Okay, Because I can go from Haven to Haven, can't you? You can go from Haven to Haven. So if you, you can go from Rivendell yeah. to Lorien if you want to. Lorien is what I meant. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Rohan, is, uh, Edoras is slightly too far away from Rivendell. You can't get there in four. Yeah. I think it's five. One, yeah. two, three, five, six. No, it's six. Yeah. Well, this yeah. way around, it's one, two, 
three, four, five. Yeah, it's five if you go yeah. that way around. I actually looked at I actually looked at uh, at, uh, at Lorien and then um, realised I'd taken the wrong car. Anyway, that's where we're going. So I've ended up at uh, Lorien. Well, okay, so we both draw one card Two. at least, and then we may draw another yeah. one if we want to. I'm drawing one, and the site path is actually printed on the card itself. So if you're going from one haven to another one, the site path is printed on the card. It's wilderness, wilderness, borderland, wilderness. Yep. Okay. And you didn't play a Ford, so... I didn't play a Ford, no. Uh, and the company size is two. Two. So I am going to draw... Oh, but you're going to, a, you're going to another haven. I'm going to a haven, yeah. So there's no point in me going out of my way to try and tap your characters because you're going to end up at a haven. No, because I can't do anything when I get there. Uh, right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, Can you and on the, the, da the danger room? is that I actually end up giving him points. If I throw in a, uh, uh, you know, an enemy, a hazard, and he's able to defeat it, then it just... Yeah. Uh, this card, by the way, has a typo. That it's missing a one in the top left. I thought it had been fixed. I'll speak to uh, Jason, who put all of these cards together. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much to Jason for, for all of the cards. Uh, he does a, He has a website where you can get all of these cards, really, really good quality. Um, and he has updated with this website, but this mod, which wasn't created by Jason, so thank you to the person who created the mod, uh, it's obviously not picking that up correctly. So I'll get that sorted between games. Uh, yeah, that should have a one on it. Um, okay, I'm oh, not going to draw a second card. One. I'm, I'm just going to draw the one. So... You all ready? Okay, yep. Okay, so the company size is two, and I'm going to play a long event. Oof. So I'll put it in the middle, actually, because it's a long event. So the number of strikes and prowess of each wolf, spider, and animal are increased by one. It's very similar to the aroused minions, uh, or the minion stir, um, but it's for animals, basically. So that's my first card that I've played, um, and I'm not going to play a second card because I think it would just be giving you points. Right. I think. Okay. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So, okay. Wake of War, Paul. So, wake, wake of War, it's a long event. Yeah. And this is going to... This is... Um, this doesn't talk about being keyed to anything. No, no, no. So, does this apply, does this apply to any... Um, anything. A wolf yeah. attack? Yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah. In fact, thinking about it, Killy's already... Already tapped. Yeah. Oh, maybe I should do. Yeah, go on. I'm going to change my mind. I am going to draw a second card. Okay. Right. So I've played that. That was one card. And I'm going to now play... This one. Wolves. Ooh. Drag it over here. So you're fighting wolves. And because of the... In fact, let's, right. put it, let's put it next to you. Because of the Wake of War, it's actually four strikes four. at nine. So, you choose to put one on there, then one goes on there, and now I've got two extra strikes that I can assign, and I think I can put them both on the same one. What was Aragorn thinking when he headed off on his own with Killy? Because <laughs> Killy's, Killy's just recovering, isn't he? Oh no, Killy yeah. helped Boromir. That he was it. Boromir to, to, uh, with his protection. Yeah. He, he's a bit tired. So, I, I think we're going to put both of these extra strikes oh on. that's mean yeah <laughs> that's mean <laughs> well i'm putting it on aragorn aragorn's going to defeat this i think quite easily so what would you like to do with these okay okay so well let's go with we may as well get the pain out of the way so let's go with keely so who's who's minus uh well he's he would be on three he's, he's minus tapped. one because he's tapped which yeah. is two and minus he's another then, two for these yeah. So he's on zero. He's on zero. Okay. Needs nine. Nine to draw, ten to beat. Then we could tap. Uh, we could tap people to help. I'm not going to. Okay. Um, just let me have a look at my hand. Second. Could play cards if you were able yeah, to. Just, just going to have a look. Keely is a warrior. Yeah, but he's already uh, tapped. He's already tapped. Okay, so lucky strike. 
short event, Warrior only. Okay, so two we're get, getting a little bit of um, tactical advice in the chat. Yep. What you could do is you could have Aragorn face his strike first and not tap. And then when Killy's ah. facing his strike, you could then tap Aragorn to tap give Killy a plus one. Yes. Ah, yes. Thank you. That sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds good. Yes. Because if he doesn't tap, because he's quite strong. He is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So he's not going to tap. Okay. So he's fighting at six, minus three because he's not tapping. So he's fighting at three. Fighting at three. It's against nine. Against nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. James Naylor's just joined in the chat. Hi, James. Thank you for joining in. Late night Middle Earth card game from 25 years ago. Well, 26 years ago now, in fact. Okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. <laughs> All right. The tactical advice we got from Thorin the Second is apparently not allowed <laughs> from Theonis. Uh, characters assigned strikes cannot assist others. Okay, thank you very much. There uh, you go. Can't okay. do it. Because he's assigned a strike, he can't help. Okay. Because you've been assigned a strike, you can't do it. Right. Okay. Thank you very um, much for that clarification. Right. In that case, I will use Lucky Strike. Okay. On and Aragorn. Uh, no, I'm going with Keeley first. Oh, right. Okay. He's yeah. fighting at zero, but he gets to make two rolls two and choose rolls. the best one. In yeah. other words, he has advantage. He has a bit of advantage. Oof. That was lucky, wasn't it? So what did you get? I uh, got seven. Seven. So I, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't beat it yet. I and again? Roll. Come on. No. Ooh. Oh, no. So Keeley is wounded. And I make a body check against eight. Eight, yep. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Six. Not dead. Six. Okay. Okay. But the strikes go. And yep. that was a defeat. Right, so what's that, what's Aragorn going to do? Okay, so Aragorn... I mean, you might as well tap now, because I can't play any other cards. And you're not doing anything when you get there, so... Okay, so he's going to tap. He's on six. Done. James is saying this makes it look really complex or pretty complex. And this is the really, really simple cut down simple cards. Wait till we, if we carry on doing this uh, in a few months' time, there will be. <laughs> yeah. It's great though. It's, oh. I'm, making it, I'm making it look like it's hard work. But, um, <laughs> did, I not, did I not get that? You did, but Gimli didn't. Uh, sorry, Killy didn't defeat his strike. Oh, he didn't? No. No, no. absolutely. You only oh. defeat a run. Right, that's it. I can't play any more cards. So that is the end of the movement hazard phase for your first company. So Rivendell goes. You are at Lorien. And now we both discard down to eight cards. I'm at eight. I'm good. I'm on seven. Can I draw? You draw up to eight, yeah. Yeah. And now we do your second company. So reveal the location or the site. Yep. You are heading to Bree. So from Rivendell to Bree, it's a nice short Wilderness, trip. Wilderness. It goes through. Um, oh, we actually need a second character, don't we? Yeah, we need we need two Gandalfs. Two, two Gandalfs. Right. One of them is in Lorien, and the other one is now heading towards Bree. So it's um, wilderness, 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 and then a border hold. And the company size is two and a half, rounded up to three. And we both draw one card. Can't draw any more. Okay, so now he's going to Bree. Now the thing is, if you look at the Bree card, there are no items playable at Bree. So you might think, why is he going to Bree? And that is because of a card type that we've not seen yet, which are factions. There are factions in the game uh, and you can recruit factions for marshalling points. And the Rangers of the North are recruited at Bree. So that's why he's going to Bree. Uh, to bring the Rangers of North into play, it is the same as items. You have to tap a character. So if I can get all of these characters tapped um, before he gets there, he's not going to be able to play the Rangers. So that's my plan. I can play three cards. Wake of War is already in play. So I'm going to play, first of all, we're going to play some Wargs. Okay, so here we go. Here, here are the wargs, and because of the wake of war, instead of it being two strikes at nine, 
it's three strikes at 10. Okay, you have three characters, so it's basically one on each. Yeah. Three strikes at 10. Okay, off you go. Uh, I am keying it, by the way, to... Uh, it's got to so be the wilderness. wilderness. Got to be oh, the wilderness. wilderness. It's wilderness for the wolves, isn't it? Wags? Yeah. Or do you want to key it to the site? Which I is can't, the... because if you look at the icon on the Wags card, it's in a circle. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's yep. Yep. Yeah. can only be key to wilderness. That's, that's uh, Neil nice. is in the chat. He said he was a playtester for this game many moons wow. ago. Well, welcome, Neil. Thank you very much for joining in. Okay, in that case, uh, I'm going to uh, go with Merry, mm -hmm. and he's going to run under his cloak. Okay, so that's cancelled. Cancelled that one. Means I can't get the points, but uh, the points, there yeah. we are. Uh, and we're against uh, 10, isn't it? Isn't it? Ten. 3 at 10. 3 yeah. at 10. Um, so he's six, seven. Okay, so seven if you tap the shield. If I tap the shield, I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap the shield. Okay. Not so he's tap, fighting not, at seven. Not yeah. So he's fighting at seven. Um, if I tap him, seven if you tap him, four if you don't. I need ten. Yeah, tap, I'm going to tap him. Okay, so he's fighting at seven. Does. Yeah, done it. So that strikes defeated. Yeah, that's okay. And then Gandhi. Gandhi is uh, six. Is six. So tapping or not tapping? tapping? Yeah, yeah. I need to tap. I need to tap. Okay. Fighting at six. Done. Yeah. So you defeated two of the strikes, but you didn't defeat all of them. So that goes to my discard pile. That was card one of three. Potentially three. <laughs> so um, I'm going to follow up the wargs with some wargs. So it's, it's three strikes at ten. All before I get into into the uh, enclave of Bree. I'm not behind the <laughs> fence. It's a dangerous place. It is. Can't there you go. Fence. Okay. Um, well, no choices okay. to make. It's just yeah. Unless you've got cards to play. Yeah. So what we'll do is. Um, uh, well, so Merry, mm -hmm. okay, uh, gets halfling strength, which is defeat one attack, cancel one cancel, strike cancel one attack, against the Hobbit. Against one strike against Hobbit. Halfling yeah. stealth, right? Okay, so that's cancelled. It's, it's a little bit like the Elven cloak. Yeah, a bit like that. Okay. Okay, and then um, so Boromir is at five because he's tapped. You've got another one. You've got one more. No, you've got. Two more you can play, isn't it? Yeah. No, this is the second card of possibly three. Three. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, Kyle okay, is saying gonna, we are, the we wolves are I took back before went to the wrong pile. Nope, oh, they went to my pile. They shouldn't have gone to my pile. Okay. Right. Okay, so I've played Escape. Oh, another one. Uh, another one, but I have to wound a character. So if I'm you're cancelling to... the attack, you're actually cancelling the whole attack, so you want to put the halfling stealth back in your hand. Yes, it's not a strike, it's an it's attack. not a strike, it's okay, an attack. Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Halfling stealth back in your, back yeah. in your hand. Got that. You're playing escape, so one of your characters gets wounded. That's, that's Merry. And the attack, it's always Merry. Yeah. <laughs> I think he needs to go and see a union. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so I'm going to play one more card. Mm. It's going to be some wolves. It's got to be some wolves. Oof. Four strikes at nine. So it's one, two, three, and then I'm going to put an extra one on... Where am I going to put the extra one? Let's put the extra one on Boromir. Okay. Okay. Um... Uh, 
Okay, so we are going to play the Elven Strength. The Halfling, um, halfling Stealth. Stealth, rather. Yeah, yeah. so that's that, that cancelled. Yeah, so that one. Okay. Uh, then we are going to play... Um, okay, yeah, we're just rolling. We're rolling. And Boromir, so, he's uh, fighting... Boromir. A, he's normally six. Minus one because he's tapped five. Minus another one because he's got a strike on him, uh, a yeah. second strike on him, so he's down to four. Four, and I need nine. Need nine. Not too bad. No, yeah, that's right. And then Gandalf is Gandalf fighting at five. Five. Oh, Gandalf, what are you doing? Well, you equaled it. So you don't get wounded, oh, nothing happened. but oh. you didn't defeat it. But you didn't defeat it anyway because this... This strike was cancelled. No, no, that's right. So those wolves go to my discard pile as well. And there you go. That's the three cards. So you have successfully arrived yeah. at Bree. Char characters are really, you know, <laughs> on the, not on their last legs, but they're so tired. So at the end of the movement hazard phase, both, both players uh, reset their hands to eight cards. Okay. And then it is the sight phase. Would you like to enter Bree? I mean, you've not got any untapped characters, so you can't play anything. <laughs> um, if I'm not in Bree, um, well, I am, but I am at Bree because there's there's no. I'm at Bree anyway, aren't yeah. I? The, the fact is that there's no automatic attack, so there's no. no need, there's, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I'll no. say I'm at Bree. Okay. I can't do anything while I'm End there. of turn phase. End of turn. We can both discard a card. I'm going to discard this card because I already have one of them in play. Yeah. And then it's my go. So, my untap phase. Gimli does not untap. Uh, Saruman does not untap because I'm wounded. Uh, so these cards untap. I don't know what that's doing there. Um... And do I want to transfer some of my items around? I think I do. Because we have Orchrist. And uh, I don't think Orchrist is best in Pippin's hands. <laughs> I think it's, it, 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 it's probably best with Legolas. So we're, we're going to reorganize our, our items. So, so Legolas is going to give his Dagger of Westerness to Eladan. Uh, in order to give a, a, an item to another character, you have to make a corruption check. But because it's only one corruption point, um, you can't yeah. that, can you? I, I, yeah, you know, there you go. So that has been successfully given there. Pippin is going to try and give Orchrist to Legolas. So Orchrist's uh, and the Elven Cloak, he's got three corruption points. I'm rolling and I'm adding two to this. So, <laughs> yeah, only just it's because of his plus two, he's done yeah. it. I've got five against three, so I've done it. So Orchrist goes over here. There you go. So I've reorganized my items. I'm not going to reorganize my company. I, I think you can do it at a non-haven, but I think if you do it, one of the companies then has to stay where they are. I think so. Right. At the end of my organization phase, I am going to choose where to go next. And before I do that, I'm actually going to look at cards that I have in my hand. And bearing in mind, I think I'm behind on points. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead on points. But I think I'm slightly behind on timing. So, looking at these cards, and I'm thinking. Factions can only be played at their location, can't they? Which is printed on the card, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... There is there. Okay, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm going to choose a card, um, and it's going to be maybe that one. And I'm going to put it down here. Okay, so that's where I'm going to go. Right. Resource long event phase. Do I want to play long event? I do not. So this long event which I played stays in play. Uh, and that will stay in play until the start of your turn. Mm -hmm. So it actually affects you as well. Or it affects me for anything that you play. How many rounds have been completed yeah. so far? This is round three. Um, 
Right, movement hazard phase. I am going to Thranduil's Halls. So I'm not going back to a haven. I'm going to wander around with wounded characters. We are going from Mount Gundabad, which is a dark domain, uh, through this place, whatever this place is. It's the Anduin Vales, which is a borderland, into the Woodland Realm, which is also a borderland, uh, and to Thranduil's Halls, which is a freehold. Dark Domain, Borderland, Borderland, Freehold is the site path. My company size is five. So you can play five cards on me. Gulp. Here we go. Oh, I should have played. Uh, no, you can't. You can only bring new characters into play at Havens or their home sites. So I couldn't have brought yeah. another character into play. Yeah. Oh, this is rather sad. <laughs> this is rather sad. Um, I want to hear. You haven't been through any. You haven't been through any wilderness. Wilderness, have you? Not really. No, I've been going to the really no. dangerous places. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure that I can. Um. Okay. Well, let's. Look. Okay. Well, I can. I think the only. I think. I think the cards I can play are this. Okay. River. You're playing a river. Okay. Um, short event. Now, how about me playing a second river? <laughs> uh, it says. Oh. Mm. There's a good question actually because it, it says guard at the end of turn. So yeah, there there is a question. Put, put oh, have we drawn river. sight cards? Sorry, no, we haven't. We we need to draw cards. We draw one or two cards. Thank you very much yeah. for letting us know. Yeah. We draw one. Uh, do I want to draw a second one? Uh, no, I'm not going to draw a second one. I'm just going to draw one card. You could draw two if you wanted to. Yeah, I've drawn I've drawn two. So yeah, question for the chat is. Can you have two rivers in play? That is a that is a good question. Let me just see what my um, strategy guide says. River. It's a purely delaying card, pure roadblock, quite powerful. Uh, by playing it on a site, you force your opponent to either tap a ranger or to do nothing at that site. Since most companies have a ranger, river works best when held until the rangers are tapped or until they're low on characters to face the automatic attack. Two rivers is possible. And I must tap two rangers, and I do got, not have... You've got one, haven't you? I have one Remember ranger. One. So yeah. you can double river. Double oh, river. that's that's. You nasty. are double rivered, sir. I am double rivered. There's <laughs> nothing worse than a single river. Uh, there's nothing worse... Nothing, yeah, nothing worse than a single river other than a, a double. double river. Are, are you playing okay. any other cards? Yes, I am. Oh, you are? Uh, right, I, okay. I am. I am now because I drew the cards. Um, so I am going to play... Uh, cards which are for borderlands. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that is first of all uh, some men. Men. Some brigands. Ah, uh, yes. So you're keying Two that strikes. to the borderland. The borderland. Two strikes, Two strikes. But if any of the strikes wound me, I basically lose an item. Do I choose the item? Uh, defender's choice. Yeah, otherwise you'd steal Orchrist and I'd be like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, bearing in mind I'm not going to be able to do anything when I get to the site. You can play a maximum of five cards. You've played two, th this is your third card. Yeah. yeah how I many didn't play that very well because I, I went in with the double river just because it was a laugh. Yeah, it's how many fine. points are the no, brigands worth? Brigands are worth a point. Well, we're going to put one of the strikes on Legolas. Well, when you say that you can't do anything, there is something you could have done. What? But Thranduil's Halls, isn't there? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I now can't do anything. Oh, I see. Because I don't have two rangers. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right, I thought I misplayed it then. So the second strike is going to go on Eladan. Okay. So we're going to do Legolas first. Legolas is fighting at eight. Because he's got Orchrist. 
That's it then. He's good. So he's not going to tap. But he's fighting at five. Yeah. So that's done and defeated. Okay. Eladan is fighting at six. And I am going to tap. So I've done it. That's defeated, which means I get the point. Yep. 13. My victory point pile. Right, that was card three. Would you like to play any other cards? Yes. I'd really like to play some other cards, but unfortunately... No more cards. I don't think I can. Okay, so we unfortunately we don't fully get to Thranduil's Halls. I'm going to put that in my discard pile just to remind me that I've been there. Um, because I can't tap two rangers. So I, I don't do anything. So those go back to your discard pile. Yep. And that is the end of my sight phase. So that is... Oh, sorry. The end of the movement hazard phase. We both reset to eight okay. cards. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought I was going to play that. No, that was a mistake. Um, oh, and I've got this. Oops. <laughs> I got a card I should have played. Yeah, totally got a card I should have played. Never mind, never mind. I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay, and then it's the end of the turn. We get to discard a card and draw, and I'm not going to discard a card. I'm not going to draw. That's the end of round three. You can discard and then draw if you want to. Yeah, mm, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay, yeah. this is using Tabletop Simulator. Uh, query in the chat about what we're using. Yeah, it's Tabletop Simulator mm -hmm. is the software we're using. Right, so the start of round four, it's your go. Um, okay. Killy is recovered to tapped position because you're at a haven. Uh, Aragorn untaps. Uh, Gandalf untaps. Merry doesn't untap because you're not at a haven. No, Stay, he's not at a haven. Stays yeah. wounded. Uh, that untaps, that untaps, and that untaps. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Anything you want to do in the organization phase? Um, I don't think so. No. Okay. I think we're okay with that. So you play new cards if you new want to. Cards. Yeah, I do. Uh, I want this. Now, I think the maximum number of cards you can have of each type in a deck is three. So I think that's all of your rivers gone. Lars is heading to bed. Thank you, Lars, for joining in. Yeah, we've got a good number of people tonight in the chat. A lot of, uh, a lot of new faces that I've not seen before. So if you are new to the channel, uh, if you've not seen any other videos of mine, then yeah, thank you very much for, for joining in live. And uh, if you like the content that I create, uh, a lot of the content that I make is only made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Uh, you can support me, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules, if you're interested. Right, so Aragorn and Killy yeah. are heading oh. off from Lorien to somewhere, which I think might be Edoras. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, and like, yeah. uh, I kind of went that way. Are you not staying um, at Bree? Ah, no, I'm not. Okay. No. All right, you're moving around just to draw cards. No. I see. I need to draw. I need to draw. Yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, this now disappears. The wake of war has gone. Would you like Thankfully. to play any long event resources? I'm not going to play any long event right. resources. Right. Movement hazard phase. Which one first? Okay. Let's go to uh, Edoras. Okay. So we both draw one card. One. And I can play two cards against you. And the sight path is... Uh, wilderness... Borderland, Freehold. Yep. Yep. So Wilderness, yep. Borderland, and then arriving at a Freehold. Yep. Okay, let's have a look. And I can play a maximum of two cards. Um, I might as well play one. Oh, then again, do I want to give him the points? Wake of I've War is no again. longer in play. I've done it again. Hmm. I'll have to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put the cards. 
some of the cards are only usable at certain in certain phases, aren't they? Yes. But, Do you want, have you got something you wanted to play? Uh, yeah, but go yeah, on. I missed it again. No, go on. It's this, it's this halfling strength. Yeah, you can um, do it if you want. That's why I keep wounding Merry. Is I've yeah. got you right with this. You can you, you can, can basically bring it heal. back. You can heal Merry. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Have yeah. you drawn your card for moving to Edoras? I've drawn a card. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I can play maximum of two cards. Two cards. First card I'm going to play is Lesser Spiders. Four strikes at seven. Oof. So it's yeah. one on that one, one on that one. And then I'm going to put the extra two on this one. Got it in for him. You have. Okay. So we're going to go with... Um, really, really bad. Really, really bad. I don't want to tap. In. Okay. Uh, well, Keeley's going in for, at zero. Mm, I should have put the extra ones on Aragorn to force you to tap him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have done that. Oh, well. So Keeley's fighting at three, minus one, minus one, minus one. So Keeley's fighting at zero. You get seven. Yeah, you only need a seven. Yeah, I definitely should have put yeah. him on Aragorn. Is, is there anything I can do here? There must be something I can do here. No. Cool. Okay, I'm rolling. Yep, yeah. got it. So those strikes yeah. are defeated. Just. Aragorn, okay. what's Aragorn going to do? Aragorn, Aragorn is on uh, six if he yeah. taps. Three uh, if he doesn't tap. Tap. Whoa, I've just done it. Killy's shown the way. He's not tapping. Okay, so you're fighting on three. Three. Oops. There you go. Easy. That. So you well get done, Aragorn. you get a point, you're up to 12, and that goes into your marshalling point pile. Right. I've added your point on. So I can play one more card. Silence now. I'm going to play the one that has the errata. So oh. th this should be worth one point if you defeat it, but I'm going to play the oh. Haworn. Oh, this is so hard. So it's one strike, and I am keying it to Wilderness. Yeah. I mean, it can also be played at all of those locations listed on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's Keeley. Uh, no. So no. you is you choose oh, which. Oh no! Oh yeah. So I have yeah. to choose. I have to choose. Oh no! Oh, no. Paul. Yeah, so you don't have to. You, you you choose which of your untapped characters take the strike. But then if you don't, I then choose which character takes takes the strike. And I could put it on Aragorn. So you either yeah. put it on Aragorn. Or you put it on or, Aragorn. Or yeah. you give me the choice of where I put it. Okay, well, I'll give you the choice then. So I'll put it on Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> but right. yeah, that, that's how that bit works. And sometimes it can get really interesting with those decisions. Yeah. That was, that was good to play Horn there when there's only one strike. Yeah. Oh... Okay, yeah, one strike so, at ten. Um, right, okay. Uh, it's ten. And I'd be on three. I, uh, that's what we're doing. Aragorn is, is blazing the way. He's not he's, tapping. He's not tapping. He's, he's got himself some fighting spirit. Okay, so he's fighting three and he needs ten. Ten, yeah. Off you go then. C come on, Aragorn. No. Not, not, not enough. Quite. So Aragorn is wounded. <laughs> And I make a body check. Now, if I get more than nine, no, you can't really bad, it's really bad. Five, no, Aragorn is not dead. And the horn goes to my discard pile. Yeah. Okay, that is it. The party oh, yeah. company has arrived at Edoras. Yeah. So, uh, Lorien will go back to there. They've arrived at Edoras. And now we do the second company. Oh, sorry, oh. discard down to eight. Or oh, sorry, reset your hands to eight. I get an extra card. And then we do the second company. Mm -hmm. Back to Rivendell. Rivendell. So we both draw one card. Okay, and the site path is Wilderness, Wilderness Haven. Yep. Okay, yep. and the company size is three. Uh, 
there. And who's untapped? Yeah. All of them. Yeah, they're all, they're all untapped. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to play anything. So I'm just going to discard a card. Okay, uh, I've got an interesting card here. I'm just reading this card through. Playable at the end of the movement has a phase. Okay. Mm. Which of these? Why would you want to give up? Why would you want to give up? Oh, I think I'm going to discard that one. Really tricky sometimes. So, you got a card that you wanted to play? Um, no, I, I don't think I do. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to go, I'm going to stay at the Haven. I, mean, I do have a, an interesting card I've not seen before, but, um, I don't think it's really applicable right now. So, right. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, uh, we've, uh, we've got to the Haven. It's not much yep. I can So we do. can, so Bree, you didn't play anything there. No. So it goes back here, and you you could visit Bree again if you wanted to at some yep. point yep. later in the game because you yep. didn't do anything yep. when you were there. Yeah. Okay. And that's your end of turn phase. So we can both discard a card if we want to. Down. Uh, do I want? Do I want? No, I think I'm okay with my cards at the moment. That's going to be quite a way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to discard any. I have to discard no. one. You don't have to. But if you do, you discard one. Uh, if, you, yeah, if you do discard well, one, you'll draw. I've got nine, so I have to discard. Oh, sorry. So at the end of the movement hazard phase, you have to reset to eight. Right, so I didn't. I, I yep. had another card. And okay, then I'm in your... Okay, in well, your... That, that card there is probably strategically the wrong one to discard, but it's quite good, actually. Bridge. At the yes. end of the movement, you can go to another, another site, so it basically increases your movement. Yeah. Um, you do get a second hazard phase, however. Uh -huh. But in that case, when you when you didn't play anything on the first hazard, that would have been quite nice. But yeah, yeah. So it's mean, only when you move to a haven you can then play yeah. the bridge, and basically you get another you get another go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so end of turn phase, you can discard if you want to, and then draw back. No, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay, and then we go to me. So Eladan untaps Gimli and Saruman stay wounded. That is the end of my organization phase. Yep. Uh, I'm not going anywhere else. So we go into the movement hazard phase. No cards are drawn. And you can only play hazards keyed to a free hold, which I oh, don't. That's there's really like maybe there's one or two cards in the game which can be tied to a key, um, a free hold, like the assassin and traitors and things like that. No. So, no cards. No cards. Not, not playing. No. Nope. Okay, so end of the movement hazard phase, reset to eight, which we've done, and then I'm going to bring a faction into play. Now, we've not seen this yet, but I'm going to try to bring into play the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves is a faction which it says is playable only at Thranduil's Halls, and I have to make uh, an influence check, and it's got to be greater than eight. Now, there are modifications depending on the race of the character doing it. I'm going to use Legolas to do it, so he's an elf which means I get a plus one, but also Legolas's special ability is plus two direct influence against the Wood Elves faction, and you use how many direct influence Legolas has. So if you look on the left-hand side of the card, there's the number two in the black hand. That's his direct influence, two. Plus two because of his special ability. Plus one because he's an elf. I'm at five. So I'm at plus five, and I need to get greater than eight. Now, I don't think you can... Uh, I don't think you can tap other characters to boost that role um, like you can with combat and corruption. I think it is just a role. So I, do I have any cards that can help me? No, I don't. Off we go then. And we've done it, just. Uh, so what mm. happens when you successfully convince a faction to come onto your side, the card just goes to your marshalling points pile. They don't follow you around. It's like it's the entire faction. I've basically convinced them uh, that, that, that my way is the right way. So I get three points, but you had to tap a character to do that. Um, and that's it. That is the end of my turn. 
So, oh, and the site is tapped. So we do an end of, another end of turn phase. I'm not going to discard a card and I'm just going to draw one. You can discard and draw one if you want to. And then we go into, no. I think, round five? I think we're in round five. Mm. Okay. So, uh, Aragorn stays wounded. Killy untaps. And now we haven't been playing many characters. Have you not got any characters you want to bring into play? I, I do now. Oh, yeah. you do now. Right. So you can bring one character into play each organization phase. And you can bring a new character into play either at a haven or at their home site. Every character, every yeah, character has a home site. Okay. And you've got 10 points of general... No, you've got... 11 points got, of general influence. Yeah, I've got enough general. You've you got definitely um, enough general influence. Yeah, okay. So I'm in my uh, organization phase. I'm going to play. Erkenbrand. Uh, uh, right. So Erkenbrand comes into uh, his home site, is Edoras, which is where you are. So you can bring Erkenbrand into play. Cool. The, okay. the wounded Aragorn says, come and fight for me. Go and help me. <laughs> help. Carry me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I can't do that in my other party, no. in my no. other location, can I? Because only no. one for this phase. Yeah. Okay. Then long event. Yeah. Play a character card or a wizard card if allowable. Yeah. Okay. No long events for me. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, where are we Place going? your new sites, if you want to. Yeah, okay. So, uh, no new site for Edoras. Okay. Okay, and uh, Rivendell. The party at Rivendell were thinking of making a really long journey. Okay. <laughs> From Rivendell, where, where are they going to go? To learn my Middle Earth. You want to go I down to this go. place? This place is really yeah. nice in the summer down That's here. That's a really nice place, yeah. It's lovely. I, I might, I might head lovely down, down to here. the White Tower, I think. Where's the White Tower on the map? Um, Minas Tirith. Where are we? In Minas Tirith, yeah. Here we yeah, go. you can't get there from Rivendell. No, you can't go all the way there, but I can go. I can go. You can go uh, to Lorien. I can go Lorien. And then Lorien to Minas Tirith. One, two, three. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I can go to Lorien. Right, you didn't know that. But, I didn't know that. Um, but secretly, this little party headed off. He's going it. somewhere. Yeah. Go, go somewhere else. Right. So, yeah. no resource long events. So, which, uh, so it's now, which of your companies do you want to do first? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do, um, we'll do the, we'll do the marching party. First, okay. So, reveal the card. Yep. Oh, look, it's Lorien. Oh. Right. So really? We both draw one card and may draw a second card. I, I'm not going to draw a second card. That's a good, that's a good question. Where are you going? You're going to have to go somewhere, aren't you? Because you've done your three D or fours. Yeah, you want to be saving uh, up your bad cards for when I, I do move. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to move next time. So, uh -huh. um, can't lose that though. Okay, well, I'm going to one, two, three. Yeah, I've got an option of drawing a second, haven't I? Yes, um, you, you must draw one, and you may draw a second. And I will. Ha um, and okay, I'm going to draw a second just in case. So, what route yeah. are you using to go to Lorien? Because there okay, are so there are two options. There's wilderness, 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 or Wilderness, wilderness, borderland, wilderness. Okay, well, it's definitely the wilderness only. Yeah. <laughs> you go. Uh, da, 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 unfortunately, the wags are about, as are the wolves. Yeah, so the company size is three. Three. Uh, and it's wilderness, 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 wilderness. So. Yeah. Now, again, you going to Lorien means you're not going to do anything when you get there. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the same position again. I could throw enemies at him. 
But all he'll do is probably end up tapping all of his characters out, getting some points, and then it's like, you know, I've not really slowed him down at all. I don't just want to give you points. Well, unless they, unless they get wounded. Well, unless they get wounded, but if I'm only throwing little enemies at you... Yep, yes, yep. The chance of you getting wounded is slim, and yes. you've got an elven cloak, so actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take an approach that I'm not going to play any hazards on you. Oof. Yeah, no hazards whatsoever. So I have to discard a card at the end of the movement hazard phase. You have now successfully arrived. Um, okay, the, first thing can just, the first thing I can do is have a second breakfast because yep. I didn't get hit by anybody. Okay, so <laughs> we're now... The company? We're now yeah, so we're now over here. So, yep. um, so you're not we're moving. Edera, so we're not moving. So um, no cards are drawn and I can play hazards keyed to freehold, yeah. which I don't. Yeah. And then at the end of the movement hazard phase, we reset to eight cards. Uh, Done. Yeah. Okay. Let's so. get these down. I'll Jason's in the chat. Yes, it is a blast from the past. Yes, get your cards out. Definitely fantastic. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. And as you can, I, you know, if, you, if you've been here from the start when I said this isn't like any other CCG that you've ever played, hopefully by now you realise what I'm saying. This is a fantasy adventure game that uses the CCG model for the decks, but is actually so much more it, it, it's kind of like a board game you know we're moving around we're rolling dice all of that sort of stuff that's exactly uh, the feel yeah that's yeah exactly the feel okay so site phase do you want to do anything at either of these sites i guess you're trying to recruit the riders of rohan yeah um i'm <laughs> not actually because they they uh they took a disappearing trick what and they rode they rode round through the forest yeah i missed them oh i thought mm. that's why you stayed there yeah. Well, I stayed there so that I could recruit Erkenbrand. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you recruited Erkenbrand in the organization phase. You could have then moved. No, I don't want to move. Yeah, okay. Right. So, no site but, phases. But, but, I'm, but I'm not going to try the for the faction, no. I don't right. have the faction, no. Okay. So, end of turn phase. You can discard and draw if you want to. No, nope, I'm uh, happy where we are. Yeah, I'm happy as well. And then it's my go. So, untap. Uh, that's that. And do I want to transfer any items over? I do not. And then I need to get Saruman and Gimli healed. So I'm going. I'm going there. Uh, I don't have any long events to play. So I'm now going to reveal the card and I'm going to a haven. So we draw cards according to where I moved from. So it's one each. You may draw a second one if you want to. Ooh. Um, I am going to draw a second one. Ooh. I've drawn two. Right, okay. Would you like... I've got a company size of five. So you can okay. now play up to five hazard cards on me. Uh, the path that I'm using is uh, Borderland, Borderland, Wilderness, uh, followed by a Haven. So, let's see mm. the first card. Yeah, okay. Um, first off then. Brigands meet you in the open. Okay, so two strikes at eight. Well, I'm going to take one on Legolas because he's awesome. Um, and I'm going to take one on Eladon as well. Two strikes at eight. Yeah, so Legolas first is fighting at five, six, seven, eight. Not going to tap. So he's fighting at five. Oh, hang on, hang on, Paul. You've got a million cards in hand. Me? No, me. I've got lots of cards, yeah. i I got loads of cards in hand that I've been forgetting to use. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm fine on this. I'm not, I'm not going to... Legolas is not going to tap. He's fighting at five. Yeah, done. Yeah. Right, nice. okay. Uh, Eladan is fighting at 
six, and he's going to play block. Because he's a warrior, so I can play it, and he basically doesn't tap against the strike. So he's fighting at six. <clears throat> yeah, done. Both strikes defeated. I get a point. All right, that was card number one. Uh, yeah, Neil says one of the most beautiful CCGs you've seen. Yeah, the art for this game, um, some of it I'm not keen on, like the leg glass art, for example, I'm not keen on. But I kid you not, some of the art for the sites, and obviously these are scanned in images, uh, but some of the artwork for the sites is just astonishing. Rob Alexander's um, art is, is, is brilliant. Um, very evocative. And bear in mind, this game came out before the... Um, the, the Lord of the Rings films. So people like me who've been a Lord of the Rings fan forever um, was influenced by uh, the animated movie from the 80s, but also uh, John Howe's artwork uh, and people like that. Uh, and yeah, John Howe's done some of the art for this game as well. Uh, and the other guy, Alan, I can't remember his surname. Right, what have we got? Orc Warriors. The Orc Warriors were in the Borderlands. They were in the Borderlands as I was, as I was wandering through, not the wilderness. Yep. Not the wilderness. Right, three strikes at seven. So it's going to be Eladan, it's going to be Legless, and it's going to be Gimli. There's the three strikes. Okay. Uh, Sean is uh, trying to work out how to understand you build your decks with certain locations, predefined strategy. Yes. I'll come on to that at the end, because at the moment we're kind of getting sight cards from this pool here, but you wouldn't do that when you've constructed your own deck. I'll, do, I'll explain that later on. It's a very good point. So we're going to do Gimli first. Gimli is five, minus two because he's wounded, but plus two against orcs. So he's fighting at five. Seven, yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to, no, that should be. So yeah, Gimli's fighting at five. Yep. So that's that strike done. Uh, Eladan is fighting at six. Seven. Mm -hmm. Seven, and he's not going to tap. So I'm fighting okay. at four. Yep, yep. done. Uh, and Legless is got Orchrist. So he's at five. He's at nine. <laughs> so he's not going to tap either. So he's fighting at six. So I've done it. Yep. So and that's well them done. gone. Easy points. Yeah. Ding. Okay, that was three cards. Or two cards? That was two cards. One, no, one card, wasn't it? No, the um, brigands oh, were first. Brigands first. Yeah, okay. yeah, brigands were first, then the orc okay. warriors. Okay. Um, Alan Lee, that's it, thank you. I get confused because I'm friends with a guy called Alan Howe. So <laughs> whenever I uh, put Alan Lee and John Howe together, I always want to say Alan Howe. <laughs> and I know it's not Alan. Oh, Tom's, uh, no, it's Bert. Bert has turned Bert. up. Bert the troll. Okay, so Bert was in the now, in the in the wilderness. Yeah, you can only tie this to the wilderness, can't you? Yeah, yeah. So I could, if I wanted to, assign the strike to and Pippin and use the Elven cloak to cancel it. But I think I might mm -hmm. go for the points because Legolas is eight. Oh, but if I do that, if you Ooh. do it with the cloak, you don't get the point, do you? If I go for the cloak, I don't get the points. No. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the strike on Pippin and I'm going to tap the cloak. So Tom can go to your discard pile. I have a plan. <laughs> right. To steal two points. That round. was a third card. Any other cards? I'll tell you what, I didn't tick up my uh, point for Urkenbrand. Oh, yes. Yeah, we forgot Urkenbrand is actually yeah. worth a point. So you're it's on 13. Worth a point, yeah. Okay, um, no more cards. This has been a very different game from the last time we played because we were playing yeah. loads of characters last time we played. We had yeah. like eight yeah. characters in play. It, the draw is very different. Yes. So speaking yeah. of bridge... <laughs> he says... <laughs> I've drawn a bridge. I've arrived at Haven. Playable at the end of the movement hazard phase on a company that moved to a Haven. Yeah. Check. That company may move to an additional site on the same turn. Right, so off we go. We've, we've got to Lorien, we've found a bridge, 
and I'm going to go somewhere else. We waited for all the baddies to come out, and, and it's got going rid of all to the be going to be uh, here. I'm going to Welling Hall from Lorien. So the site path is wilderness, wilderness, and then freehold. Okay, so we both draw one card. Uh, we should have reset to eight at the... Oh no, because it... Is it a second movement hazard phase? Playable at the end of the movement hazard phase. The company may move to an additional on the same turn. Another site card may be played and a movement hazard... Yeah, so it's a second movement hazard phase. So... Ah, oh, so we should go to eight. So then. we should have gone to eight at the end of the first one. Okay. And then you draw one new card because I'm going to Welling Hall. And then we have a yep. second movement hazard phase. So, again, you can play another five cards on me. Okay, and it's... it's wilderness, uh, wilderness. Open, wilderness, wilderness, and yep. open hold. Uh, Freehold, yeah. Freehold. No. No, I can't. No? Right. No. So we have successfully arrived at Welling Hall. Yeah. And when we are there, I am going to tap Pippin, try and bring into play... The Ents of Fangorn. Oh, nice. So, uh, playable if the influence check is greater than nine. Hobbits get a plus four. Pippin has one point of direct influence. No additional bonuses, so I'm, I'm on a plus five. The roll is... <laughs> <laughs> so, I think the card is discarded, but the site does not tap. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, because so, you couldn't keep on going with it, could you? You couldn't keep trying for the Ents. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, that, that rarely happens, that. Wow. But yeah, yeah, there you go. Those, them, their dice. Uh, factions. If one of your characters is at the site specified, you may tap to attempt to play the card. If you're successful, you get it. Um, if the character successfully influences the faction, the faction card is placed in your play area. After a faction is successfully played at a site, the site card is tapped. So maybe it goes back into my hand. Ooh. I'm I'm not seeing it saying that it's discarded. It just says if you successfully influence the faction. Oh yeah, so I didn't actually play it. You don't play it and then make the roll. I didn't actually play it. So it's still in my hand. So I can try again next turn. Interesting. Right. Are oh, you on page 34? Is that what you're reading now? Uh, I'm, well, I've got my Middle Earth, the Wizard's book. Companion book. book. Okay. So, That's yeah. Probably clearer in there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so the faction is discarded. Hand. Okay. Theonis has said the faction is discarded. So it's not in this. But I, th I thought it was. So thank you for confirming that. Okay. Um, That's a shame. Right. I'm done. Uh, end of my turn. Well, I was going to do that, but now I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah, end of my turn. I'm not going to discard a card. So if you want to discard and draw, and then we start the next round, I just need to take a short comfort break. So Paul's going to talk through what he's doing at the start of next round, and I will be back in a minute. Okay. So... Um, I'm looking at my hand. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see what I can play because I wanted to stay at Edoras because I'm able to bring in Aoma, which brings in another warrior ranger. And for me to do that, I can just stay where I am, bring him in. Now, of course, I'd forgotten the fact that I'm also at Lorien, and uh, Lorien he could have he could have been played at Lorien, but I do have. Uh, Berrigond as well. I've drawn Berrigond. So I now have two two characters. And Paul was saying that in their last game we we had lots of characters up early, uh, and I've drawn them late. Um, but that's that's okay. Um, I've got influence. I need to check how much influence I've got. Uh, got ten with Gandalf. He's looking after eight. I've got four. 13, I've got 7, I've got plenty of influence, so I can bring Irma back in. So 
so I think I think I'm going to stay at Edoras. Or do I keep bringing them? Yeah, I need to boost this company. Company of three. Right. I am back. What have I missed? All, all my strategy for you missed all of that. Oh right, okay, that's good. Russ has just joined in the chat. I'm up so late. Yes, I said I said to Vicky it'll be about ninety minutes, but we're loving it. Brilliant. Has the, has the chat said that my strategy is rubbish yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, okay, if I'd have so, had that card, if I'd have, if I'd have managed to play that card and not roll stupidly low, then the game would have been over. Yeah, it would have been over. But I roll stupidly we, low. We so okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I said I'd stay at um, Edoras. So I'm going to you stay did. at Edoras. Yeah. Okay, so let's... Um, I can't Where's your other group going? Anybody. Sorry? Where's your other group going? My other, my other group is on its way to Minas Tirith. To... Um, okay. Uh, which you didn't know, but um, yeah, it's uh, this one. Okay. Right. And uh, we're going to do the Edoras first. So we don't draw cards. I don't play any cards. Right. So that's that movement hazard phase done. Oh, hang on. Organization phase. Hang on. Yeah. Sorry. Organization Anything else you wanted to do? Skip, skip the phase. Um, the player character. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can bring another character into play. Bring characters in, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to bring, uh, I'm going to bring Aema in. Um, also at Edoras? Um, well, I, I, as I said to the chat, I, I'd forgotten the fact that I was at Lorien, so I could have brought him in at Lorien anyway, couldn't I? Yeah. Because yeah, you, you can bring but, a new character uh, in at a haven I, or at their home site. I think thematically we'll bring him in at, at uh, Edoras, if that's what okay. he did. So that's fine. Um, so he's three mind, uh, needs three influence. And, You've got plenty uh, of general influence left, plenty, haven't you? Yeah, I've got yeah. plenty. So, so that's all good. Uh, um, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we're going to... Uh, so has a phase on Edoras. He's done. Because if, if, if you're not moving, we don't draw cards. Oh, you, you reset it to eight, but I'm, I'm not playing any hazards. So. Thank you, I'll get a card then. Okay. okay, and now we do the movement hazard phase for your second company. Yeah, so. This they are going is to Minas Tirith, so we Minister. draw one card each, possibly two. two. Oh yeah, one or two, yeah. I'm gonna draw two. Oh, uh, right. I'm do that. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take another one. Okay, I've drawn two. Uh, Vicente is in the chat as well. Thank you for playing this. Loves this game. It's great. It's great tonight. The number of new names that I've seen in the chat from people that are fans of the game. It's really good. Thank you for joining in. Right. So the site path from Lorien to Minas Tirith is uh, wilderness, borderland. Free domain and then a freehold. Okay. How big is your company? Two and a half. It's, uh, yeah, three. Round that up to three. <sighs> well, just to make it a little bit interesting. You're going to kill my characters. I'm going to play some. Wolves, and we are going to key the wolves to wilderness. the wilderness. No, wilderness. No, to the um, the half and half. Yeah, Board, the, borderland. the borderland. The borderland of Rohan is okay. where you get attacked by wolves. So it's three oh. strikes at eight, which is eight. basically one on each. One on each, yeah. Okay, right. Now, how many cards can I play? Three. Yeah, go on. That's fine. Yeah, is that enough? Yep. Because you can play more, can't you? After I've... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, done I was just yeah. working out whether yeah. I wanted well, to play something to before now. that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, this is worth point. Uh, it's uh, eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary. Uh, okay, so can Mary, can Mary do this? 
Come on, Mary. How heavy is that sword? Mary's prowess is one. One. We need seven. No, we seven need to eight. equal eight, eight to win. Eight to kill it. Come on, Mary. Here we go. Mary's going to. Mary's not tapping. Not tapping. Oh, no, he is tapping. No, sorry, he is tapping. he's tapping. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, he was. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Having a rest. Yeah, okay, so you're resting. fighting at one. Off you fighting go. at one. Here we go. Done. Done. Mike has been defeated. Well done, Mary. There you go. Okay. Um, and now Boromir is at six. Six, um, seven if you tap the shield. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tap the shield and not tap. Boromir. Not tap. It's six, seven, not minus tap. three, so you're at four. I'm at four against eight. Done. Yeah. Second strike defeated. Uh, Gandalf is at six. Uh, he's not going to tap. He's at he's three. At three. Uh, unfortunately, eight. is eight. Uh, so, so that means I don't get. It's the ineffectual. You do not get oh. the points for the wolves, though. Put that into my discard pile. Uh, right, so my second card. Let's just have a look at what you've got. Uh, okay. Oh, in fact, I can stay there and just look at the cards in my hand. Yeah. Um, so let's have some wargs. Again, tied to the, the borderland. Two strikes at nine. You choose where the two strikes go. Well, you choose untapped characters to take the strikes first. If you don't, I could put one on Mary. Or on whoever I want. Okay. Um, so I'm just thinking, oh, card I'm going to play next. Make sure I don't get this wrong. Could be my only. <laughs> this could be my only chance. Um, yeah. Can we just check the map? Minus yeah. Tirith. What do you want to check? Tirith. I want to check. Tirith is um, here. Yeah. So Greater items. So if you if make, you just look make... at this map, I'll just I'll just explain this for the people watching. This map is brilliant because what it does is it tells you what type of items. Can be played at each of the sites. It's really, really useful, but you will notice some of them are H and some of them are M. That is because in a whole other aspect of this game we haven't covered is you can play as the bad guys. The way you see these M, that is only if you are playing the minion players, only if you're playing the bad guys. The H is only if you're playing the hero players. If there isn't any particular letter, then it, it works for both sides. So what this is saying is at Minas Tirith, the only thing playable for the heroes is factions, but if you're the bad guys, you can play all sorts of fancy items. So you're going to Minas Tirith to basically recruit the um, Knights of Dol Amroth, I think. There's actually somebody else I can recruit there, but yeah. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. So basically, I don't. I, I need to leave somebody untapped. I need somebody untapped. Who, um, unfortunately, the the uh, the person I want to tap. Oh, so the men of Anorian, that's it. Yeah. Do anything. So, okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to tap. This might be a bad move, but here we go. I'm going to tap Gandalf. Yeah. Okay, uh, because I'm going to play Concealment. Right. Tap a, tap a uh, scout. And he's a scout. He's a scout. So it cancels the attack. So it cancels the attack. Yeah. Okay, so the Wargs have gone. And now my third card <sighs> for my next trick. Uh, <laughs> Excuse We're going to play some lesser spiders. Just, just some little spiders. Don't worry about them. They're not, they're not that. Seven. And I'm going to tie this to the wilderness. Wilderness, right? Okay. Now it's four strikes. Four. So, so that's one on each. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to put the extra one on Boromir. That's nasty. Okay. All right, well, uh, Mary, uh, how much is worth one point? I'm, I'm having to tie it to the wilderness because you didn't go yeah. through a uh, Shadowland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Okay, uh, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to go with Boromir first. Okay. I'm going to oh. use dodge. dodge. Target character does not tap against one strike. Doesn't tap. But he's okay. fighting at six. Tap. Fighting at six. That's so, against seven. You, you've so done win, it. Isn't it. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to roll. Oh, no, no, sorry. You're fighting at six, but you get a minus one because I assigned two strikes to you. Okay. So you're effectively okay. five. Okay. So if you roll a double one, the strike is ineffectual. You have to roll oh. anything other than a double one to defeat it. Yeah, got it. Don't get a double one. Okay, okay. defeated. Good. Okay, and he did Next. Tap. That's good news. Okay, next is uh, Gandalf. He's at six. Five because he's tapped. Five at tapped. Okay, so don't get double one. Oh, ah. wow. Gandalf, what are you doing? No, he's not wounded because you got a seven. He so, just bounces okay, off. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Seven against seven, so it was ineffectual. He's so not going to get the work. points for it. Oh, that was that really was, unlucky. That was really unfair. Yeah. Right, okay. Come on, Mary. Let's do this. We're at zero. Uh, are you not going to cancel it? All right, yes, because Gandalf didn't get it, did he? It's yeah, the I last card, and yeah, yeah you're yeah, not going to yeah, get the yeah, points yeah. for it anyway. No, I'm not going to get points. So, no. it's fine as go. Right, okay. that is it. That is my three cards played. Okay. Tense. So, I'm in. You are in. I've arrived at Minas Tirith. And yes. by luck, would have it. No, not luck. It's skill. Borrow me. Dodge all the, uh, dodge to the wolves. And he's able to have... He's got two direct influence against the men of the Anorian faction. Yep. Okay. Uh, now, unfortunately, we haven't got the men of the Anoria faction. Uh, <laughs> so, what? Um, yeah, I know. Oh, where is it? Uh, I know. It's gone. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. Oh. Um, I, well, that's why you went there. Yeah. Well, I, I no, I was going there to draw the card. I need the card draw. I literally had nothing to do. Right. Um, but what I what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna try to recruit the faction, the Tower Guard of Minas Tirith. Right, right. Okay. So, 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 so you're going to try and play this right. card. Uh, yeah, you get a plus it. one because Boromir is a Dunedin. Yeah. Dunedin, yeah. Uh, and you need greater than a seven. Brendan's popped in the chat. Hi, Brendan. We're we're almost done. Yep. If we I hadn't rolled terribly done. last round, we'd have been done. Seven. Seven. Plus the one. You got it. I got him. So the Tower Guard okay. of Minas Tirith has agreed. To stand go with, with Gandalf's it. plan. So that goes into your marshalling point pile, and you get two points. This is, this says general influence. That's not true. It's I'm going to change it. Marshalling points. Yeah, well, yeah, we're using it as marshalling points, aren't we? Yeah, we're using it as marshalling points. I, I guess you could have another tracker for um, for general influence, yeah. but we're oh, using it as marshalling points. Marshalling points. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So what happened to Mary? Um, uh, and that taps the site. Yeah. So sorry, that that one there was. Yeah, canceled. that can go. That was cancelled. Yeah. By the cloak. Okay. All done. Yeah, we're all done. Okay. Um, I should have drawn up at the end of the movement hazard phase. There we go. And then at the end of the turn, we can both discard and draw. So. I think my next turn is going to be the last turn, so therefore yeah. I am just going to discard yeah. one of those okay. cards in order to try and draw cards that are better for me. Yeah, I'm going to do the Ding. same. Let's get rid of that. Now, unfortunately, I'm oh, I could, I, not... I could, have, I, could have used, I could have used muster, actually. Yeah, I could have used muster. To yeah, muster's great. The... But you got oh, it anyway. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So how many For... can we discard? Two. One. One. Okay. One. Okay. Well, I've drawn an awesome card, but it's only playable at Lorien, and I can't just bring it into play on its own at a company. I don't think you can. Can you do that? Oh, there's a question. Can you bring new characters into play on their own as a new company? Yeah. Yes. I don't see why not. If you're at the right place. Well, no. Even if you're not at the right place. Oh no, because you're not at the right place, then are you? Yeah, but you have to you have to be you have to have a company at Lorien uh, at uh, Haven or the home. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, yeah, company. that's a shame because I, I I've got a character that can start at Lorien, 
<laughs> but you're not there. And I'm not there. And I'm thinking, well, can I just bring them into play anyway? <laughs> no. <laughs> it says play a character card or a wizard card if allowable. Bringing a character into play. You may play a character card. You must have enough general influence or direct influence available. No, you can. You can place him at no. his home site or any haven. Yeah, but you have to be there. I don't think you do. Well, yeah, you it's, get, it, it says here, site? when you play a character, you may place them into, an, into a company already at their site, or they may become a new company consisting of one character. In the second case, you must place the arrival site next to the character played. You can absolutely do it. So, and Theonis so, has confirmed so like you can a, right so now. So it's like an extra travel then? Well, no, it, it's a new company. So I'm going to bring into play at Lorien, Celeborn. So I didn't need to go to Edoras or Minas Tirith to bring them into play? No. But they would have sat there and been a party of one that you wouldn't have been able to do anything with, but they would have got you the points. It's, what this means, Paul, is we need to play again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because neither of us realized that, that you don't no, actually no. have to go there. I knew you had to, well, yeah, to say you had to be there to play them is not true. You can, as we've wow. just learned, bring them into play even when you're not there, just like I've done there. So I brought okay. Kelleborn into play, which puts my points to 20. Now I'm probably just going to leave Kelleborn there. I'm not going to have him wandering around on his own because um, that's a bit dangerous. Um, yeah, that, that's the issue, isn't it? So if you brought if you brought him in, he's yeah. on his own. He's a separate company. I can I can only play one card against him, mind. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, right now, these guys can't believe that Saruman and Gimli have been, they've been wounded for months. Um, so we're untapping. That was my organisation phase. I'm then going to go somewhere, and the place where I'm going to go is. Now, I, I did have this planned. <laughs> Let me just have a quick look. It's going to be... Uh, this is the master stroke where Paul gets four points. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to be here. I don't really want to go here. But we're going to... Dead marshes. <gasps> well... Scary. Yeah, I, I see I've got a major item, and that's, that's greater items. So I'm actually just going to have a look at the map, and I'm going to see where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I'm here. I'm in Welling Hall. So I'm just going to look at the map to see where a major item can be played. And I think a major item can be played at the Glittering Caves. Yeah. But we're going to go for a site which isn't actually in this starter set of cards. That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the Glittering Caves because it's cool. So where are all the site cards? They are in... They're in here. There's 434 cards <laughs> in the base set. Are, are they not here? No, they're the region cards. Okay. Oh, they're not numbered. They're, they're not named. Right, so I'm going to find... I think they're all at the bottom. Yeah, they're all here. Uh, glittering Caves. I think they might be in alphabetical order. Glittering Caves, there you go. So what I was saying earlier on, what Sean asked earlier on, is that when you build your deck, you actually build it and you know exactly where you want to go to get all of the different items. So you'd never go to the big deck and take a, a card out. You'd, you'd already have a plan of where you wanted to go. I haven't. So that's where I'm going to go. I don't have any uh, long events. So we go to the movement hazard phase. I'm going to play a long event. Well, you oh, do that in my... Yeah, I do that now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to the Glittering Caves. We're going from Welling Hall. So it's Wilderness, yeah. Borderland, and a Ruin. We've not been to a Ruin yet, but that's my site path. Wilderness, Borderland, Ruin. And we draw one or two cards each. So we draw one, and I'm going to draw a second one. Why not? Now I get that card. Okay. Company size of five. <laughs> Off you go. Okay. Um, first of all, we'll have minions stir. Okay, so that's going to increase orcs and trolls. Yep. Uh, then tied to the wilderness. One um, card played. 
some Orc Warriors. Second card played is some Orc Warriors. So the Minion Stern makes them tougher. We have four strikes at eight. So I'm going to put one on there, one on there, one on there. And then you put this one where you want to. Okay, right. So need eight. Legolas first is not going to tap. He's fighting at five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not going to tap, so six. Oh, guy. Oh, that looks like an 11. That's defeated. Yeah. Um, Saruman next. We might as well do Saruman. He's fighting at minus two. Oh, I'll tell you what I should have done. I should have given the dagger to Saruman. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I should have yeah. done. So he's fighting at four because he's wounded. Yep. Yeah, it's done. Uh, Pippin is going to... Where were you tying this to? The borderland, we'll, I guess. We'll do this. Pippin is gonna. Well, I'm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That was, that was, uh, you, you, have you been through a borderland? I have. Did you? Yeah. Okay. If borderland, it was then Paul, really. <laughs> yeah, gap of Eisen. Yeah. Um, so Pippin's gonna then. tap, and he's fighting at one. Yeah. Eight. Yes. Oof. No. Pippin. Pippin. Yeah. Because of the minion Hobbit. stir. So that's actually ineffectual. Oh, right. Wow. Uh, and then Eladan, he's not going to tap. So this is five, six, seven, not going to tap. So he's down to four. And yep. he's done it. Unfortunately, Pippin didn't yep. manage to. Beat. So that goes to your discard pile. And that's two cards played. Okay. Uh, Nick is um, in the chat. He says, it's a CCG. You collect more and more cards. Yes. So officially, this was a CCG. But of course, it's 25 years old now. So on Tabletop Simulator, you have access to all of the cards and can build whatever decks you want to play. But yeah, as I mean, a friend of mine, Graham, said that this game didn't really work as a CCG because of the whole, you know, you've got to buy lots and lots of cards to build the right decks. Yeah. Yeah, no more cards, Paul. No more cards. Right. So we right. have safely arrived at the Glittering Caves. Welling Hall goes back but face up, because I didn't actually recruit anything there. And then we're going to face the automatic attack. We are going to go into the Glittering Crate Cave. So wow. we're facing one Pukulmen, one strike with nine. And we're going to put it on Legolas. And Legolas is going to tap. I'm at five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, no worries. Done. The Pukulman has been defeated. Uh, and then... We've got Eladan left. Eladan, and Eladan is going to tap in order to bring into play the Hauberk of Bright Mail. Wow. Which is, a, uh, which is a major item which can be played at the Glittering Caves. So that taps the Glittering Caves. Hauberk of Bright Mail goes into play. Hauberk of Bright Mail goes into play and gets me 22 points. And I declare end of turn. And it's now your go for the last turn of the game. Okay. So basically, I'm on 22. Yeah. I've called the council. Paul has one turn to try and get eight marshalling eight. points. Okay. If you do, yes. Okay. Uh, Vincent does make a good point. There are fans of this game that are still working on it and still releasing sets uh, and are making changes to some of the cards and all sorts of things like that. So, yeah. Okay. Um... If you've got some small baddies, there's a chance. Um, so I, I, just, first... I just won't play them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, in that case, let's call it, Paul. Can we call um, it here? Yeah, I've got, I've, got, uh, I've, got, I've got seven points in hand. Oh. Um, yeah, but I yeah. don't think I can get it all because I need Glamdring. Um, Glamdring. Would be good. Okay, major item. I need to get to a major. I thought Minas Tirith took major items. It doesn't. It's for minions no. only. Yeah. Um, and I just drew. I've just drawn the Great Shield of Rohan. Right. Which, uh, and Riders of Rohan. So I could do the Riders of Rohan, but you um, could have done the Riders, but not the Shield. Well, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't get a major item. I can't. Yeah, I can't do both. So no. I, no, I don't think I can both. score it. No. So yeah. anyway, fantastic. Good fun, wasn't it? Wow, that was so good. So I mean, yeah, things... we probably made it look. We probably made it look hard work, but 
by God, yeah. it was good fun. Yeah. yeah and if, if we knew what we were doing and we were more experienced, this would be about an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half, something like that. Yeah. Something Definitely. like that. Yeah, um, could you get you get to know the cards you know where to go. you get to know the cards yeah. yeah um and yeah these remember what i said at the start these are really basic decks uh really simple decks very simple stuff move somewhere have a bit of a fight get some items recruit people that's that's the core game that's what i wanted to do for this first video we show you give you a taste of what the game is about um and we saw some fights we saw we saw a corruption check which was great uh we saw me trying to recruit a faction and that failed and the one rule that we learned about half an hour ago is you can play characters. They can come into play at their home site, but you don't have to go there to play them. You can just play them at the home site and every character is worth points. So, so that's useful gonna, to know I'm as well. Gonna, I'm going to check that through. It just seems too difficult a rule that, too, too easy. Well, you can only play one a turn. And that's true. yeah, that's true. So I think that's gradually true. if I played if I play Celeborn, then if I drew another character, that's just, I mean, I've got loads of characters in my deck. So I could then play Bard Bowman, and now I've got a party of two. They could then start going wandering. And you know, you know, I said if I do send Celeborn going wandering, mm. you could only play one card against him? Yes. I think it's two. I think the minimum number of cards that you play is two. Okay, let me just look that up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, a company's hazard limit is equal to two or the size of the company. So, yeah, it's always two cards. And yet, right. this, this was the tip of the iceberg. So, as I say, we're playing very, very simple decks with really simple uh, text on them, nothing complicated. Uh, cards which affect combat, like Risky Blow, Dodge, Concealment, and things like that. They are the really simple cards. Uh, and this was really good. It was really good fun. When you start to advance, you start to use um, other cards. You know, there's loads and loads of cards in the game. If we just have a look through some of the cards, uh, you can see here, loads of cards with loads of text on. So some of the cards are actually quite complicated, but the variability in this game, you can do all sorts. So what you saw today is you saw us going around, fighting monsters, collecting items and recruiting factions. You can actually build a one ring deck uh, because we didn't even touch the rules for the rings in this game. But what you do is you find gold rings, uh, you test them, they can turn out to be magical rings, you've got all of the dwarven rings, the elven rings, you could find the one ring, uh, and there is a certain build of a deck where the idea is that you get the one ring, and then you send it to Mount Doom and you actually destroy it and you win the game immediately. So there's loads of stuff in there that you haven't seen, and as briefly mentioned earlier on, you can play as the bad guys. These are five pre-constructed what's called challenge decks. Uh, me and Paul are not really at the stage yet of playing these challenge decks because there's uh, there's lots of cards in them which we don't fully understand and I feel that playing one of these right now would be would be a bit too much for us. The next stage for us I think is to build two simple decks and I have some source books for the game with some relatively simple decks in them. I would suggest we we build two decks uh, to start with um, and then go from there. But no it was good yeah. wasn't it? was very good really enjoyed that this yeah. it gives you a really good flavor of of, uh, of of it's a bit of a tug of war really because it, it is a race to try and get yeah. the points but you are trying to you are trying to hide you're trying to choose paths that the other that the uh, that the that the other faction can't uh, can't detect you on or can't play can't yeah. play monsters on so yeah. that that's really good that gives an extra layer yeah, I think that's really good. When, yeah, when you when you start playing a game of this against somebody new and you don't know what their deck is, you're all, you all you start off worried, right? Oof, yeah. But then, if for example you start going to the you know the shadow holds and the and the dark domains and they start playing lots of like ghosts and Nazgul on you, you're like, okay, I'll I'll avoid hmm. those places. But the problem is, like I mentioned earlier on, you have to go to those places. To play the greater items okay because the greater items are fantastic but in these particular sites you can only play the greater items at dead marshes mount gundabad or moria mm. and they are the dangerous places to go so if you want the really good items you've got to go to the dangerous places um and that's that's just how it is yeah so, yeah right yeah, really good i will say good night to you it's been a bit later than planned but it's been amazing i've loved it yeah so, me too Really yeah, great. thank you very much for, for joining me, Paul, and I'll speak to you later on. Fantastic. Joe.
And thank you to everybody for joining in. As I say, lots of new names in the chat tonight. Thank you very much for joining in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, both of us will want to do more of this, but obviously fitting this in around all of my other things. Uh, yeah. I will be doing some more. I just I just don't know when. You know, if it was up to me, I, I wouldn't have to work for a living and I'd, I'd do this all day. But unfortunately, I do have to. Um, as mentioned at the start, uh, if you like the content that I create and you want to support the channel, um, please consider supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making what I do possible. Until next time, take care and good night. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.